and welcome to Add More Zest and my name's Rebecca, also known as a 4 at 147. Happy Sunday! Um, I hope you are all well. Um, while I'm filming this, it's actually Saturday, just in case I get myself confused on what I'm saying slash doing. Um, I've been trying, well I am trying this weekend to split up my Saturday and Sunday. So I'm trying to get all my YouTube videos done, etc. on the Saturday. Cross fingers. Um, and then the Sunday I have a lot of shop preparation stock that's come in this week that all needs sorting, packaging, you know, all prepping ready for shop launch next weekend. So I'm trying in splitting my weekend rather than doing a bit of both on both days and never quite ticking fully one or the other. It's the way life goes, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I was busy filming away and I'm like, hang on, the whip and chat, it always takes a while. I don't want to restrict it too much um so yeah i have decided to of course start filming the whip and waffle as you'll know um yes i am on the minions still i did not get it finished last week as i hoped what i tend to find is i, I tend to be able to get quite a lot of stuff done um, throughout the week with work, shop, home, all the rest of it. Uh, but then I do find that every now and then, occasionally, I have a week where <laughs> I pretty much get the bare minimum done. Work, orders out, you know, some emails answered. Sometimes even that's a bit of hit and miss. Um, and sometimes I just don't have the energy for anything else. So while I've managed to get quite a bit of the minions done, this last week I was hoping to have got this section finished and I've only got part way through. I'd find I'd do about half an hour and I'm just like, I'm even too tired to diamond paint. So it's back again. Um, this will be its final whip and chat. It has to be its final whip and chat. Uh, but at the minute you'll be able to see how I've sort of been working on it. So first up, because it is very near the end, I have not done like a single cover sheet row and then done the second. They've both been coming off together. So they've both been removed together. And that is primarily due to not having to tip pots of diamonds in and out all the time. So it, it meant that I could do all of this pink section together, for example. There is some of it scattered here, but I'll, I'll need to deal with that. But at least the bulk is done and I've been working my way across. So I do have some up here that still needs to be done and that is then going into all this brown um, in the branch and I, I know we'll work sort of in lots of different places across. So I thought we'll work on minions. I have comments on YouTube um, from whip and chats up to, for example, three weeks ago, some of them are from. So I thought, you know, let's see how many sort of comments and things I can get through and you know we'll, we'll go on this whip and chat as long as I you know feel I can still keep waffling um, and hopefully it'll be a nice long whip and waffle and I'll get through a lot of you know the comments and things like that that have cropped up uh, and have been posted and the comments and yeah you guys can enjoy a nice long whip and waffle. few sort of things I always have on my brain when I first start a whip and waffle. So firstly, I am sorry there wasn't quite as many videos last week. I had a very busy weekend the weekend before. And my plan was YouTube actually got sort of postponed. So rather than being a weekend you know, doing all the videos at the weekend. The idea was that I would do them 
in the evening through the week for the following day. And as I mentioned before, I ended up having a week where I just hit a brick wall quite soon after finishing work and just didn't did not have the energy um, the willpower or anything to get additional or to get the videos done I think part of it was they were longer videos that I had originally planned to do um, rather than than short videos so I did some reshuffling of when videos were launched to ensure that there was still a video a day but they weren't all on this main channel they were scattered between the two um, but yeah I've had a lot of fun today getting videos done ready for next week there's some really exciting unboxings actually coming on this channel next week uh, a couple of companies that I've not worked with before but I'm really excited about the products I have unboxed those already uh, or I have at least done the videos unboxing those already because I got very very excited and I hope you guys like them too and of course well as I'm filming this the video has gone up for the new shop items um, this tray is one of them so this is the sky blue tray and this is one of our limited edition pens that I have popped a metal tip into because as I said I do test the likes of the products that we do sell I don't want to sell anything that I'm not happy with the quality of and I popped one of our glue dots into this pen it it does like come out ever so slightly. I chose not to cut that off. I have cut that off in the past. I chose not to on this one just to see how much it squashes down as I use it. And I find it's at a really nice sort of place now. It is not restricting me picking anything up. It's been working absolutely fantastic with a glue dot in. Um, so yeah, this is one of the limited pens that is due to be launched um, on Friday along with of course the limited tray because we all know how the trays go on launch day. So this is probably the last whip and chat that I will actually get to use it without people asking where the tray is from and me saying it's out of stock and I don't like to do that on current videos if I can help it. <coughs> the only time I tend to use the limited tray, I use them when I'm diamond painting myself um, in the conservatory. I do pick different colours each time depending on my mood or maybe to match my pen, whatever sort of takes my fancy. But the only other time I do tend to use them all on camera is during the waffles. So the June waffle or the December advent. That's when I tend to use, you know, some of the limited, limited edition trays. But yeah, Minions is getting there. It's definitely getting there. Um, slowly but surely. I am very, very close to finishing. I do still have one minion tucked under this cover sheet over on the far side. There is still one minion to do, but I've not quite reached him yet. I did think to myself before I started filming this, do I sit down and diamond paint this evening and then do the whip and chat in the morning, ready to go up for four o'clock? And then I thought, no I need to I need to fully try doing YouTube one day and shop preparation stuff the second day um, and Megan's more available tomorrow so of course we both end up doing we've got quite a lot of shop preparation stuff that we want to do even things like restocking the log books etc we want to make sure that they're all fully stocked because next weekend we will be busy packing orders and getting those out to you guys. And we've got quite a few orders to pack this weekend as well. 
I think sometimes people wait for the launch to be announced and if there's something that they're not you know maybe they've decided that this blue tray is a little bit too close to the other blue tray and they manage to get one then they sometimes just place their order now rather than wait which is perfectly fine it is a very close color um, we have ordered um, a fourth printer we're going to do some room rearranging which I'm classing as shop stuff tomorrow we're going to do some room rearranging so that we will be able to take the fourth printer and the plan is then that we will have one printer that does the trays for the monthly launch and all the other three printers that we have do all the standard colours because we still haven't fully restocked the shelves as much as we'd like from the zesty tray being launched i like to have a, a full shelf before i even think about taking a color off a printer to do a limited edition and i've had to break that rule this month to be able to get one tray out and i just keep changing over the others just to try and keep stock ready so that people order and i can ship their order out that's my main aim um, and I've, I've been managing it while getting this blue tray printed. It's got a couple more days worth of printing until I get my final total of how many trays will be available on Friday. Um, but yeah, we've ordered a fourth printer. We're going to do some rearranging this weekend so that we can get all four printers in the same place because it's a lot easier to manage when they're all in the same place. It's a lot easier for me to be able to deal with them. Um, but I do also have, I have an, a week or two in the office this month. Um, so the printers won't be able to run quite as much. And we are also, having a kitchen fitted this month which was not expected it was expected to be fitted next month in March and that was the idea it was getting fitted in March and I got an email the other day saying that oh you know your worktop is going to be templated on this day and fitted on this day and I emailed back going, um, you're saying that my worktop's going to be fitted before my kitchen's fitted. How's that working? Anyway, they haven't yet replied to my email. I did phone up, um, wasn't able to get much information from the customer services because they're not the kitchen fitting. But I did manage to get hold of the fitting company that they use. And they had sent a message to our supplier who we've arranged everything with and asked if they could move the date forward um, to start on the 28th of Feb and our supplier has said yes they just haven't told us or hadn't told us so we've had a little bit of a, a crazy couple of days moving our plumber because we are removing a radiator and we live in the UK, so we didn't want to remove the radiator too soon. We're also having um, the gas pipe capped off because we're going to have um, an electric hob, an induction hob rather than a gas one. So we needed the gas capping off. And that, of course, needs to be done properly and certified. So, yeah, we've managed to move the plumber. So we're going to have a week with no hob. And then we're going to have a couple of weeks with no kitchen. Um, we'll have a week. We'll have a week where I'm hoping, and the, the fitter has been amazing. Um, the fitter is going to enable the washing machine and the new dishwasher to still be used, which means there won't be any washing up done in the bathroom or in the in the bath. It would have to be to be big enough. Uh, so we won't have to wash up in the bath. Um, hopefully we will have a dishwasher, but 
we won't have a sink. So I'm sure my whip and chats will be very entertaining at the end of this, end of February, beginning of March, while I give you any potential kitchen sagas that we have. But yeah, it's all all go in the Warby household. But hey, what's life if it's not crazy, eh? I've just realised I've missed some right down here because there is only a few, so I've missed the arrows. So I might go and try and fill those in in a minute. I'm trying to work my way across. I'm gonna be doing some black in a minute, which should help fill quite a few of these gaps and hopefully bring it all quite a bit closer that I'll be able to take off some more cover sheet paper. Oh, picked up two, it's like a little bonus. When I pick up two. Okay, questions. Say so I will never, I will never, never get there um, if I don't start answering some questions because some people have been waiting three weeks for their comment or question to be answered. Uh, Mindy, she says hello from Maine. She says you keep talking about the weather. She said later this week it's going to be below zero. She said, it's cold, raining and snowing all at the same time. Uh, she said she loves loved the mega whip and waffle. Yeah, I feel like I always keep, keep needing to have a mega whip and waffle. Um, but sucks on the snow with rain. I think that's worse. It's either snow a lot, you know, and deal with you know, deal with the, the clearing of the roads or, or the clearing of the path and the driveway and driving in the snow, but at least it looks really, really pretty. Or just don't snow at all. Like, don't do half a job when it comes to snow. That's what we tend to get if we get snow here because we live um, in a valley. Is it in a valley? Like it's not specifically a valley, but you know, in, in relation to the country being high, low, we are lower than some other places in the country. So it takes a lot for it to snow in our town. But when it does, it, it's normally a half, half an effort is what I call it. It's, it's not a full snow. It's like it's trying to be something it's not. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not the prettiest to drive in. It's like... Give us snow or don't, but stop this half a job. Uh, right, I do also need to have a quick drink. I have got half a brew here. I'm 17 minutes in and I've answered one question. Woohoo, storm in this whip and chat. You might be getting more of a whip and chat than you thought because I'm going to plough on this and these comments need to at least get up to last week's whip and waffle is my plan. We'll see how I feel because I did ditch my chair. So I did have a folding chair in my craft room that I, I don't tend to use when I'm filming my normal videos. I don't tend to use a chair. Um, but I did use it when doing a whip and waffle and I would often start being sat on the chair and then I would potentially stand up for a bit and then I would sit back down again for a bit, especially when I was doing the, you know, when it was the long videos. But then I found that I was starting a sat on the chair, but I was getting off the chair fairly quickly and not sitting back on it. And it was more, it was more of a problem having to move the chair from one side of the craft room to another, just so that I could, um, you know, get to a stock item to pack an order or get to storage to kit up a painting. And I, I found it was, it was more hassle having the chair there um, and being in the way than it was just to get rid of it and stand up for whip and waffles. So I've just been standing up for all videos. Um, at least I'll get to sit down for shop prep tomorrow. 
but yeah it's easier to sit down stand up and not have the chair to fight with I have enough paintings in bags diamond paintings in bags all around my feet enough as it is um, we are going to be doing some giveaways just to let you guys know I have been boxing up things ready for giveaways because the, the last lot of giveaways we sort of did all the, all the giveaways we did last year um, we actually bought some boxes in for them to do them and then I realised that we get so many packages um, that come into you know come into our house for you know stock and things like that or even just Amazon for household stuff I mean how many times we order off Amazon can quite often sometimes be embarrassing um, the amount of times that you know we're, we're picking up bits because it's just so easy um, to get something that you've been looking at that I decided it wasn't worth buying, you know, a, a set of boxes in because, you know, we're trying to move a lot of our packaging for orders anyway to environmentally friendly. We're slowly but surely moving over our plastic packaging to the eco plastic packaging. So while it does still need to be plastic in case it rains, we don't want things like stickers and stuff getting wet. Um, we are moving to the eco brand so that it does um, degrade a lot quicker. It's a lot better for the environment. Um, so I figured with giveaways, let's reuse some of the packaging that we get in um, to send out the giveaway boxes. Because that's one of the best ways to be environmentally friendly. Um, so yeah there will be giveaways they are what we're thinking of doing is doing them across like all of the different channels that we have so there will be there will be giveaways on YouTube there will be giveaways or a giveaway not sure whether it's one or multiple uh, possibly multiple on YouTube but there may be a giveaway on Instagram there might be a different giveaway on Facebook and we're sort of going to scatter them. They're going to be open for 24 hours, probably, just to ensure that we can cover lots and lots of different places that we are. Um, there's the Facebook group, so there might be a giveaway there. And we're just going to scatter them about and they're just going to pop up so that everybody has you know, that chance of catching it and entering, rather than doing one large giveaway um, or one giveaway where there's multiple winners, we'll just do lots of different giveaways with one winner. Um, so there'll be, it'll because it'll be open for a shorter period of time, I don't know whether that increases the chances of winning or not, but we just thought it's a little bit different a little bit of a different way for us to do it and if it's only open for 24 hours we can start getting some of the you know the packages out to people as soon as possible so do keep an eye out they will pop up here and there um, and there'll be a chance to win a giveaway box we may end up also doing some more mystery boxes um, as well just due to the volume of diamond paintings and things that I've got here to share with people we'll probably do a mixture of the two just to clear out because diamond paintings keep coming in constantly coming in um, all the time so I like to share the love where I can okay and I've gone off topic again Um, Anna, she says, great job getting through all those December comments. Yep, yeah, I feel like I'm behind on them all again, though. Hence doing a bit more of a, a whip and waffle now. We'll see how, how long this one ends up being if I keep getting distracted anyway. 
Um, she says, I see you're very happy with the, um, at the progress you've made on minions over these last three weapon chats. She said she actually managed to watch yesterday's and today's video in one sitting each. So I did do a marathon. I think one of them was at least four hours. Um, she said, oh, me, but last week I had to watch over four days. Maybe that was the four hour one. I had to watch over a bit of time. Yeah, that did get a bit epic. I don't know if I've got four hours left in my day today for this whip and chat to be that long. So I definitely need to make sure that I'm answering comments and stop getting distracted by things that I keep meaning to tell you all and then forget. Um, but yeah, I'm also very happy in the fact that I am getting every time I'm doing these weapon chats, I am getting, you know, one diamond closer to finishing the Minions painting, which has been done for over a year. I have been doing this one. When I filled in my logbook with the details, I started this painting in January 2021. Now there were some months, or some months, weeks maybe, that I didn't do any of it. I did fit in doing Mr Quackers as well, but I do feel that that's quite a long time for a painting that is not a heaven and earth design. Because my heaven and earth design, I don't even think that'll get completed in a year. Probably won't even get completed in two or three years, never mind. Never mind getting it done in a short period of time. Uh, Helen Wright, she says she's definitely feisty when she needs to be. Well, small people often are. Um, she says we've got to be when we're so short. Yep. I think that's that's often part of it. Uh, she says we need to be taken seriously somehow. She says her mum has shrunk now. She says bless her. But she always said she was five foot and a half. Um, and that the half is the most important. Sometimes it is. Uh, quite often I do definitely round my size up. Though I'm actually not, you know, it's not something that I've always dreamed of being taller. It actually really doesn't bother me. I don't feel like I'm missing something um, by not being taller. So, you know, ask me that again once we've had this kitchen fitted because I think the cupboards will be taller. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's never something that's hugely bothered me, but I will still always round my size up. Um, because, because I can. So I do. Um, Fair Dust says, can you use Pattern Keeper for Dreamer's Designs? And how do you do that? Um, I don't think you can. Basically, Pattern Keeper uses a PDF. And it, as long as the PDF is formatted correctly, and this is where the Facebook group proves invaluable because I don't quite know enough. I just know it works with my Heaven and Earth designs. And that's, that's what I want it to do. Um, it. The PDF has to be in a certain format for it to be able to read the symbols. And for Dreamers Designs, I know they have sent me a PDF of the one I purchased from them in the past because the symbols were just unreadable. Um, they since sent me a new canvas because the PDF, even the PDF they sent me, the symbols were different to what they were on my canvas. Um, but I, one, I don't know if they could send you the PDF and in turn, I don't know if the PDF would be in the right format. If they are willing to send it you and it's in the right format, it may work. If you haven't already downloaded Pattern Keeper, you do get a free trial for two weeks. So it is something you could potentially test if that's all you wanted to use it for. However, I don't know what benefit it would be because 
with Dreamers Designs, you get the canvas with the symbols already on it. So I don't know what benefit you would have from having the PDF unless it was something that you ended up in effect doing twice. Once from the canvas they sent you and once from the PDF. But I, I don't know whether that would also be against their policies. I don't know if that, you know, that's not the reason they sell them, I don't think, for you to do them more than once using the PDF. So, yeah, sorry, I can't help you much more on that one. Um, Nellie says, hi, Rebecca. She says, do you know if people make a tray for diamond painting without knowing anything about it? Um, there are some sellers that, that sell multiple um, diamond painting trays in a 3D version. I don't think it's a matter of them knowing nothing about it. Um, I think a lot of the time, the 3D printed ones are, you know, they, there is somebody that diamond paints um, and can at least provide feedback on them. I think I'm trying not to be too harsh because there are many amazing 3D diamond painters out there. Um, I think quite often it is a sort of maybe a team. I don't know if there is people that diamond paint and do the 3D design themselves. I mean, my husband three, you know, did the actual designing of this tray and he's not a diamond painter. However, it did all go through me and I, I sketched out what I wanted the tray to look like and I went through quite a few different prototypes with him before I was happy. Even to the point, um, one of the files was sent to the printer in a slightly different way last week and it printed the ridges in the tray slightly differently to what they normally are. Um, and I spotted it straight away. Um, and, you know, we had to get that file fixed so that it printed them in a quality enough to sell or that I was happy to sell. Um, but I think there are, there are some that maybe have maybe multiple different designs that haven't gone through the same process as maybe or the same you know amount of checks with a diamond painter as ours have the hardest part on the tray to be fair is getting the ridges right and the ridges to print right so that they will hold the diamonds they will tip your diamonds the right way up um, but they need to be not too high so that they keep your diamonds upside down and don't allow them to tip the right way over and that can be the hardest part of the design is getting that right um but yeah i i think there are some that have you know that the template potentially for the ridges and, and the diamond painting will work well but i think the design is sometimes is a little bit more quirky I suppose that's what I'm thinking of. The actual design of the tray itself is, is more of a quirky design and not designed based on function. It will function as diamond painting tray, but it doesn't function as the best diamond painting tray. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Some people will buy it because it is in the shape of a certain thing or in a certain shape. And they will be more than happy with using that tray because the shape of the tray makes them smile, makes them happy. So therefore, it is the best tray for them. And I suppose that's what I was <coughs> meaning in relation to the design of our tray is it, it's not only the fact that, you know, it needs to not look bad. 
I don't want to say, you know, it's the most, it, it, <clears throat> It's not the it's not the most quirky design. It is a little bit quirky in the fact that it's in the shape of a, or sort of in the shape of a diamond, nearly in the shape of a diamond. Um, but if the shape of the diamond didn't work as a practical, then it wouldn't have happened. There was a couple of shapes that looked a little bit better diamond-wise, but didn't work to hold the tray and to work with the tray, and therefore they got ditched. Um, they weren't going to give me what I class now as my perfect tray. And that's what I see this tray as. This is my perfect tray and I can't imagine diamond painting without it anymore. Which is a good job, I've got quite a few. Um, I've got one of each colour and I can always print more if something should happen. But so far I've had trays dropped, knocked, um, and used on a very very regular basis because sometimes I forget to change them out um, and I they're all still working the same way they were when I first allowed myself to have them. I've got a couple of diamonds that just will not turn over. They got stuck. Okay. I'm nearly out of black and of course I've left my black in another room. So I'm trying to use up what's in my tray and get a, as far across as I can. But actually looking at it, I might just need to go and get my other black and refill up my pot and get a little bit a little bit more of the black done going across. I might need to have a look at what's under this section as well and see because I'm getting up to like a yellowy colour. I've got the yellow is sort of the next colour here and I'm sure I've got a minion here. So let me just have a look see. Let me zoom you out so you can see. My battery needs changing as well, so maybe that's a good excuse to go out and get my black diamonds. So let's move this over. And I'm using the big clips because I am trying to make the diamond painting come a bit further down my easel. It's a little bit easier on my arms than reaching right up to the tippy tippy top. But if I have a look here, see yeah, I'm getting all these yellow colour in fact, it's going all the way across. I wonder how much of this I can get on here. I like to get it sat on my light pad. Oh, I can get it all on. I might have to move you guys over a bit from one side to another when I zoom in. But I can get it all sat on the firm surface of my easel slash light pad. And I can just start from this side and move across. But look, we got another minion. Okay, I'm going to change my camera, battery camera. I'm going to get myself a black. And I'm going to see how many questions I can get through while doing the black on this section. And then I can start to fill in some colour and potentially get minions finished very, very soon. Okay, battery's changed. I have moved my storage um, for the diamonds up a little bit so that I have a little bit more room to move this easel up and down. And here's my diamonds and my funnel, which I have ready. I think I have a bag with a few more left in it. Yes, I do. I've got a couple of empty bags there as well. So let's, while I'm in my craft room, let's take them off and then I think the rest all have diamonds in. We'll see whether I need them or not. Oh no, that one's blank. Um, we'll see whether I end up needing them or not. I don't think I'm going to need all that 310, considering one of these bags does fill up um, this round pot about two and a half times. A bit more than two times. <coughs> this 
one's got a little bit of static, not too much. Okay, so diamonds are all out of that. I'll remove the sticker and stuff later. And then go into the next bag. Okay, so that's going to be plenty. So I've still got loads left in that bag and this bag. So I think I'll have enough for 310. Let's see if I overfilled this. I did, but that's okay because I'm about to... I thought I'd gone... I normally judge it about how far up the funnel I get to go and still get it all to fit in the pot. But I obviously wasn't paying attention enough. So I'll pop my little funnel back on my little book ring and that normally sits on the edge of my diamond painting cart. Okay. So I find that tapping it against the side of my hand can often give some diamonds that are a little bit stuck that extra little bit of nudge without giving it a full jolt. And let's zoom in. Let's see how far I can get to zoom in now and still move things about. I should be able to get zoomed in a little bit more, which might be a little bit easier for you all to see. Might be a little bit nicer that way. Okay. And I can just move my computer from one side to another to read out all the comments. So Connie, uh, she said, great advice, she said, on tackling her Heaven and Earth design project. She said she is working on a 50 by 75 round project at the same time. So she is working on something else alongside her Heaven and Earth design. Um, she said she will do small but consistent sections of her Heaven and Earth designs. Uh, and she's fine with it taking as long as it takes. I think quite often that's what you need to do with the heaven and earth designs or even sometimes just a big normal painting but especially a heaven and earth designs because it is a different type of diamond painting it does take a lot of brain power i think it's more of a mental load not a bad mental load but there's definitely that the more of the process because you are going from a chart to a blank canvas. It can be a little bit more mental than just, you know, dotting and dabbing your next diamond in front of you where you can see exactly where it's going to need to go and you don't really need to think about where it needs to go. I mean, you do because it needs to go on the right symbol, but... I hope that's I hope that's a nice explanation of you're not thinking as much where it needs to go because the symbol is right there in front of you. Um, whereas I think if you had a confetti painting or if you've ever done a confetti painting where, you know, it's very much scattered and the symbols are sometimes quite hard to see which symbol you're trying to do. A heaven and earth design can sort of be that sort of brain power all the time. And it can get very exhausting. And I do think you need to, to scatter it. Um, and Or at least, you know, realise that there are times you're not enjoying it as much. And it is okay to take a break from it. Um, she says in three or four months, uh, she said she will have an idea as to whether she'd be able to get it finished in the year for a Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, she also says she too loves the, the J.D. Robb audiobooks. She started listening to the complete series for the third time. Yeah, I think it's the third or the fourth. I've definitely read the first book. Uh, I'm getting closer to the end of the series now. I'm currently on Secrets, um, which is in the 40s or 50s. So I'm getting closer to the new books that I've not yet read. Um she said the, the J.D. Robb books got her through a lockdown and she's looking forward to the upcoming video on the storage unboxing. Yes, it was very nice storage from Amazon. I have, uh, today I have kit up a diamond painting in that new storage. 
And one of the brand new items that I'm unboxing on this channel this week, I'm also going to kit up in the same storage because I think it is going to be absolutely perfect for it. Um, it's it's probably well the video's not been filmed yet for the new for the new item kitting up anyway, um, but it might be next week or the week after when I'll be able to get that one kit up, and I think that new storage is going to be absolutely perfect for it. But unfortunately, as of checking today, it is still showing as unavailable on Amazon. If anybody has found it on the likes of AliExpress, that storage, do please, you know, bob a link either in the comments of this video or on the Facebook group. Because so far it's only been found on Amazon UK, which is not available for everybody. It's not somewhere that everybody can get it delivered to them. And of course, it's out of stock. So if we could find it on the likes of AliExpress, it would be storage that could be got hold of for a lot more people. And I'm sure many, many people will be very, very happy to be able to pick up some of that storage. Um, and it's the one, it's the storage box that has, let me grab hold of the empty one. So it's a storage box that has 28 bigger containers it's not the standard 28 storage and it sits in the top and has a storage compartment underneath it's all one box um, I did an unboxing on it I think it was last week maybe the week before the week before last um, I did an unboxing on this channel um, for the storage after Louise had shown it in the group and I'm so glad because I was wondering whether to get it. I was thinking, oh, maybe I don't need to. I have got 28 container boxes already. I've got loads of them. If I ever get any friend or family member into diamond painting, I often give them one of the 28 storage container boxes that I've got to start them off because it's a great beginner one. And I have so many. I have so, so many of them. I was like, I don't need another especially when those came as a three pack. But I've I say I've just done a video, an unboxing video for an item that is absolutely perfect for that storage. And I will be kitting it up in that storage because it's so perfect. Um, and I gave one to my niece. Um, while she doesn't need the bottom for storing, say, extra diamonds, um, she keeps her little zesty tray and her little pink glitter pen in there when she went shopping in my in my shop um, and went home with a few diamonds and she did go home with a little zesty tray and a little glittery pink pen because it was glittery she couldn't decide between pink and purple but pink one and yeah, it enables her to keep all her tools and stuff together. So it'd be amazing if we could find some more of them. <coughs> um, Alice said, sweeties on a stick here is called a lollipop. Uh, she said, that made me laugh. Yeah, sweets on a stick are a lollipop, or at least the like hard candy sweet. Um, is called a lollipop. We love a lollipop, lollipop, lollipop. Anyway, I'm definitely not singing. Uh, Alice said she loves these Whipple waffles. She said, thank you so much. She said, you've made me laugh and giggle along the way. Uh, she sometimes watches or just does the dishes uh, while listening. And sometimes she sits and diamond paints with me. Um, she's just finished Kitchen Helpers from Diamond Art Club. Um, her first one completed in 2022, she said, and she's kitted up Fairy Tale Dreams from Diamond Art Club. She said both are the um, Randall Spangler. 
is it Spangler? Spagler, sorry. I have seen a lot of those and I know they're extremely popular with Diamond Art Club. They just, I don't know, it just, I think they're cute. I just don't think I'd do a diamond painting in them. But that's why we have different sellers, different artists um, and different diamond paintings about, isn't it? Because not everybody likes the same designs. And I think it's, I think it's amazing that we have so many different options to choose from. And one thing that I think is good for lockdown is it has brought many more people to diamond painting. You know, it has people that have been stuck at home and have been looking for something to do. It has meant that diamond painting has reached more people and made the craft grow because it's a very, very early craft considering to, considering, you know, against most others. Okay, so I'm just tipping all the diamonds down at the moment that didn't want to sit in the right way. Probably because the tray was getting full. And then I'm also going to bash some of them back and forth. Oh, I knocked too many out then. Try and get a few more lined up before I start turning my tray around. There is so many different black lines here. I'm not quite sure where I'm going. I keep going here, there and everywhere on it. Try and focus. Get some. I am slowly moving down. I just keep changing my mind on which section I'm doing while moving down. Um, okay, let me just move, I'm just moving my computer to the other side. It is so much easier for me to read things when it's to the right of me. Uh, Denise said, in the terms of, in terms of, people having a hard time getting notified about new things. She said, could it be possible to offer a newsletter on your website that people can sign up for? Um, you can use the newspaper feature as a shop update option for those who would prefer to receive it via email rather than having to go searching. And then she said, edited to add, you sort of covered it. Uh, but she typed this out with the video on pause. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's in relation to the mystery boxes that we have occasionally done. There has been some people that have commented that they, you know, missed out on a mystery box because, for example, they're not on Facebook or they don't do social media and they only do YouTube. Um Megan and I have looked into the likes of an email newsletter um, that could potentially notify of anything that is a random because we do, I think we do fairly notify anybody of new items and new shop launches. You know, the shop launch for next week has been notified on Facebook and Instagram. It has also been notified on YouTube from the video that went up showcasing all the items and it is a week in the future so it gives people you know the time to set their own type of reminder and you can email sign up to be notified when the items are in stock. I think the problem with the mystery boxes is because we send them um, they're shipped on their own. They're not shipped with other items just due to the way they need to be packaged and the bulk of them. Um, we have to ensure that they're sort of shipped separately to anything else. It's not easy to throw, you know, throw them in with a load of stickers and stuff. So we tend to do them as a separate item. We put them into the shop as a separate item because that is easier from, from a business point of view and being able to track the sale, um, you know, and the costs involved in that. The email newsletter side of things is something that we can add to our website, but it is an upgrade to do that. And I 
don't believe at the moment due to time primarily time wise um, we may well bring in email signups in the future once we can guarantee that we have the time to do those regularly you know sort of a newsletter not an email sign up for a product being back in stock but a newsletter it is a different level on our website plan and while I'm more than happy to upgrade to it I'm only happy to upgrade to it if I am putting a newsletter out or, you know, actually use that email function to notify of new products on a consistent basis. And at the moment, I just don't have the time to do that. Um, I just don't have the time to commit to pay that extra amount um, and that I will definitely have the time to do that enough to be worth the cost. If I do get to reduce um, my hours at work that I am hoping to do, I'm hoping to reduce my hours at work so I can dedicate more time to the business, then that is something I'll look to do. But it's not going to be a quick term fix because it will also take people time to sign up for the newsletter as well. So it's a future thing. It's not a it's not a now thing, um, but we have loads and loads of things in our future wants, future wants, future needs, future potentials. We have quite a few different things um, that we're hoping to do and bring in in the future. And if we can do it that way, then we will. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I can't commit to doing that yet. We may look and see if it would be practical to put it up as an item that you sign up on an email notification for. However, the mystery boxes are just sort of completely different to a normal stock item. They are more of a one-off. Um, but for now, we're doing giveaways rather than mystery boxes because I definitely want to do giveaways. And it's always been my plan to do a lot of giveaways. So at the moment, that's that's the route we're going down for now. And the giveaways will be across all the multiple different channels to give everybody a chance um, to be able to have a chance to win some goodies. Um, Yolande, she said, my brother emigrated to Australia, Queensland four years ago. She said, from South Africa, we're trying to save and go and visit him. Hopefully, she said, we'll be able to go in December of this year. She said, thank you for the long waffles these last few days. She said, it's really keeping me company. Oh, I'm so glad. I am missing doing quite a few of my longer videos. I do feel as though most of them have been rather short recently. Um, which is just due to time constraints. And I'm really, really hoping um, that I am able to reduce my hours at work just so that I can fit in everything that I want to fit in. Everything is just buzzing around, buzzing around in my head that I want to do and I just don't have the time to do it. Um, but yeah, if you can, if you can get to um, Australia and can get to save up Yolande to go for a visit, it's amazing. I absolutely love going for a visit. <clears throat> um, I haven't been for a few years. Um, I will have to sort out when, when is the potential best time for me to go because, of course, my sister has been over very recently. My brother is due over, I think he's got a wedding, he's due over soon. Um, so yeah, I need to arrange the best time to go after that. We were thinking of potentially around Christmas um, for all of us to go, but we're not sure if that's going to work. 
logistics all the time it's always logistics nothing ever quite works or it all works perfectly you never know which uh, Sir Sir Syria no Sierra there we go oh I couldn't say names I'm losing it I think I think I might need to go and get a brew break in a minute uh, she said she's been listening during work she says but now she kind of wishes that she'd save the longer chats for her work in progress for the diamond painting she says she's currently working on Into the Wonderland and she's about a third of the way through it after starting it December the 27th. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of extra time to diamond paint uh, but she does have quite a few projects that she would like to finish or work through this year. She says there's one for a friend's daughter whose birthday is in June and she's doing a custom on a blank canvas. She's just waiting for some pieces to arrive, um, but they are already in her country. She's just waiting to get them herself. Then she has a few customs of her own on blank canvases that she'd like to at least start on. She said last year was horrible. Uh, I think it was horrible for many. She said, and she barely had time to do any diamond painting. Um, so this year she wants to make more time because she missed it. Yeah, sometimes I do think you need to, you know, sort of go, do you know what? No, I need to make time for this. I need to make this happen because it's, it's your you time. It's your me time and everybody needs a little bit of me time. And while some of us are blessed to get a little bit more of the diamond painting me time than others, I do sometimes think that, you know, people do need to make it a little bit of a priority uh, where they can and try and juggle what can be let go because diamond painting is so beneficial to be able to do. The only thing with these clips is they don't clip quite the same way that the quilting clips do. They're a pretty good get grip, um, but I do find that I am, occasionally the diamond is starting to ruffle. And it might partly be the fact that I'm using a glue dot and the glue dot's gripping the diamond a bit too much. So it might be that as well. But I do find it sometimes just makes the canvas move a little bit too much. So it might be the glue dot more than it is the clips, but I didn't notice it the same way when I was using the quilting clips. I'm mainly using these ones because of course I'm not using the top of my light pad for a quilting clip to sit on. I am, I've got it on the side so that it's further down for me and comfier for me to not have to reach up as high to get where I need to go to be able to get something done. I've got some black ones that were stuck together then. It's like the diamonds had got residue on them, but these have all just come out of storage. They aren't ones that I've taken off a painting. Uh, Debbie, she said she likes to read as well. She has a Kindle app and she goes through about eight books a week, Woo. as well as diamond painting. That is pretty epic. I'm guessing you're quite a bit of a speed reader. Debbie, I quite often am. I definitely find that listening to the audio books does definitely make me go slower and I do feel as though I pick up more of some bits because they are being read to me. I still don't go through eight though. I can diamond paint at the same time as listening to a book. Um, but I think if I started reading books, yeah, it would be that whole battle between do I want to diamond paint or do I want to read? And 
Audible has been my saviour in that way because then I can go, I want to do both. And I can do both because I can just listen. I can have somebody read me a story. Um, yeah, I can have somebody read me a story while I diamond paint and do my hobby and I get the best of both worlds. Right, the camera went off and saved so I figured it was the perfect time to get a butty. Um, oh, let's do, let's finish this top part. I can't even remember where I was. Um, Debbie, uh, just to finish off from her comment that I had started before, um, she said she likes reading MC, MC Biker books and the Shifter book. Uh, she reads paperback as well she says Clive Cussler and Patricia Cromwell I have read Patricia Com Cromwell as well before I do keep this this whip and chat and the talk about books has been really really helpful because my always thought was even though I'm reading through the JD Robb series at the moment I wanted some you know some books for after maybe you know maybe another series maybe not maybe just books from from authors i used to love reading when i had more time to read and it's really nice to sort of hear the names mentioned again from people sort of reminding me so when i do get to the end of the jd rob series i know i've got loads and loads that i can go and listen to next because listening to a book while diamond painting is one of my favourite things to do. The other one I actually do really enjoy doing while diamond painting is doing these whip and waffles. I do find these fun as well, which is good. Um, because there's normally about one a week. Occasionally there isn't, but normally it's about one a week I try to do. And the length of them does vary according to how much time I have, whether I'm doing it by a section. But I have found with Minions, I've not so much been restricting myself to a section. It's been a matter of going through the comments. And I think it might be quite nice to keep that up. I know I did, I did quite a bit of the Minions before I ended up doing Heaven and Earth Design, my Heaven and Earth Designs for the month back to back. Uh, but I do quite like the idea of doing it alternate. So maybe it wouldn't, of course, not Minions, because that will be finished. Uh, but doing whatever my next large diamond painting, or indeed a small diamond painting that I've got on the go, depending on what's kitted up for one week, and then doing a Heaven and Earth designs for another week. And that will also then give me a chance to potentially keep caught up on the comments. Comments and questions on whip and chats. Um, let's hope. So, Talita, she said she was watching yesterday. Can you tell I'm still on my mammoth whip and chats? Um, and she remembered that she needed to try a tip from another subscriber she said she went hunting for a diamond painting with the double-sided tape so we did have a comment on a whip and chat a few weeks ago or maybe it was even in the December advent where somebody didn't have any glue dots so they used some double-sided tape off a painting instead of a glue dot and it actually worked for them just as well as using a glue dot. Um, so she found a painting that was double-sided tape that had a lot on it and she tested it in her diamond painting pen. She said it is stickier than the glue dots that she has. She's not sure if she prefers it to the glue dots. She's a bit unsure. Maybe it needs a little bit more time. Um, she says, though it is definitely better than the pink wax. So if you don't have any glue dots, 
and I'm saying that and this glue dot is going major sticky let me see if I can get that dabbed on on my jeans um, yeah so she said it's better than the, the pink wax so maybe if glue dots is something that you're unsure whether you want to try maybe you're unsure if you want to spend the money on getting some glue dots maybe you have a double sided tape painting already in your stash that you can pinch a little piece of the overhang off so the extra bit that you don't actually need for your diamond painting maybe you can take some of that off and see what that's like in your pen and see if you enjoy that there's always a few diamonds with Diamond Art Club more so than any other there's always a few diamonds that just do not want to go the right way up no matter how much I try and other diamonds are perfectly fine I don't know what it is unless it's because they're round ones instead of square ones but most other round ones that I have want to go the right way up as well so I don't know it's just testing me if you keep if you keep hearing me shaking my tray it's because I'm trying to get <clears throat> some of the diamonds to go the right way up and some of them just do not like to and it's not the tray because if I try any other diamond in it they like to line up like little soldiers but for some reason the diamonds in this Minions occasionally there's a few of them that just do not want to move no matter what I do most of them line up just not all of them Uh, Danielle she says she's doing a small Mickey Mouse one uh, she says but she does have five to do um, she said she doesn't really use tubs for her diamonds she just opens each pack and when she's finished the number or the letter um, she just opens a pack and does that until she's finished so I tend to do that on either very small diamond paintings and they have to be really small um, like a daisy that I did was 15 centimetres by 15 um, I was more than happy to do that by colour and I do it on special diamond paintings as well quite often ones that are partial she says how long does it take you to do a diamond painting um, that purely depends on two different factors so one factor is the size of a diamond painting will of course affect how long it takes me to complete it um, also whether it's round or square I can do round quicker than square because there's not you don't have to you know line one side up with another side they're just all round um, so yeah they're the two factors it, it really does depend I don't time it by sort of minutes or hours as to how long it takes me to do I know myself and it's a very very rough idea but the section of cover paper that I use which is about three inches by four inches roughly I think it's actually seven and a half centimeters by 10 centimeters I think is the centimeter size if that's on sort of a round painting like this minions painting if I was just doing that section including any potential color changes in with that it would take me roughly an hour if I was working on a painting you know that had a lot of one color like a really big background block of colours I might get that finished a bit quicker if I was working on something that had a lot more confetti which it actually does in sort of this section of the diamond painting it's not quite as blocky as some of the other parts then it might take me a little bit longer but that's really only my rough idea that I have um, and I've more built that up in relation to you know do I stay awake in an evening do I stay up to finish another section 
and I'll look and see whether I'm happy to stay up for another hour, you know, or it be another hour before I can go and get a bath and go to bed type thing as to whether I uncover another one. I've never really timed it exactly because quite often I will get up and do, you know, other bits while diamond painting as well. I do quite enjoy it if I get like a day in the house where I don't have any, I mean it's not very often I, I say I don't have any, I decide not to maybe do any shop or any YouTube or maybe during the December advent where I do it each evening through the week so I only have one YouTube video to do each day rather than me trying to get excuse me, to get the whole week's worth done. Um, I quite enjoy it when, you know, I have a day to diamond paint or a bulk of a day. But even when I have that, I often, I'm getting up and I'm, you know, when the washing machine beeps and I turn it on to, to spin and then I'll take a load of washing out and, and deal with that. Um, so quite often I'm up and down and I'll do bits and when I feel like you know maybe I've been sat too long maybe get a little bit of a numb bum um, from sitting on the couch too long or sitting in the same position too long then I'll get up and go you know and, and do a bit of housework and then sit back down or you know whatever it may be so I don't even really time myself then as to how long something will take Often if I'm doing a 30 by 40 painting, say, which is the most common size I do when I say I'm doing a smaller painting in with a big painting, it's normally a 30 by 40 that's classed as my smaller painting. Then I can often get that done in a week, a week and a half maybe, if I get to do a little bit of diamond painting most evenings, then I can often get that done in a a week or two weeks maybe but yeah I've never really timed it fully uh, Danielle oh no that's who's I've just read Samantha she says hi Rebecca uh, she says from Samantha in Melbourne Australia or you actually live in Melbourne like one of the Melbourne suburbs or right in the city centre uh, she says, Big W is owned by Woolworths. Uh, Woolworths is only a supermarket. Okay, so Woolworths in Australia is a supermarket, which is different to the UK Woolworths that we used to have that sold everything and was a bit more like Australia's Kmart. Possibly, was it? Yeah, it seemed to sell a bit of everything. Um she says it has different things, so their big W, she says, is like Walmart. So their big W is like the UK Woolworths, and their Woolworths is like our Asda, maybe. In fact, it's probably less like our Asda, um, because quite often our Asda has a lot of extra different bits, whereas their Woolworths is, is pretty much a super a straight supermarket, probably a bit... Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's does a lot of clothes as well as Asda. Mm. I don't remember seeing clothes and stuff in the likes of, of a Woolworths in Australia. Theirs is more of a pure supermarket, if I remember rightly. Oh, it's been a few years. They may have changed. Uh, Luma? says hi I really admire your patience she says to single place such big blocks of colour she says I do not have that amount of patience she says I need to multi place to keep me sane uh, but she only uses a four placer because it's the easiest for her see I've just never got along with multi I've not given it its full due I've not given it its full time but I've never really got along the odd time I have tried a multi-placer. I've given up. Um, I could probably get better if I put more practice into it. 
but I found that I was just adjusting them too much every time I put them down so I just don't do it now. I just feel like I get satisfaction even if it is being placed one by one. Um, she, does, she says she does want to try a seven placer uh, because they come in the new Diamond Art Club toolkits. She says she has a very small stash, maybe two or three, she says, in the closet while she's working on one because she feels that she will get overwhelmed if she has more and her budget is a bit tight. And since she has so little, she usually works on them in the order that she buys them. Uh, she says, thank you so much for the video. She says, they keep me company while I diamond paint. She says, and thank you for responding to all the comments. She says she really appreciates it. And she says, sorry for the long comment. Are oh, more than happy to read out your long comments as much as the short ones. I did used to have, I mean, my stash isn't huge. My stash of diamond paintings. I do unbox a lot of diamond paintings. Uh, as you may have noticed on this channel and on my other channel. I am quite selective on what I keep, not because I don't like them. Um, I like every single painting that I unbox because I wouldn't pick it if I didn't like it. I definitely, you know, I'm not saying ooh and ah, that's nice and, and then go in, I really don't like it. It's not the way I work. Uh, but I am extremely selective on what I keep because partly because of space I just I could probably find the space if I really really wanted to I could find the space to store all the diamond paintings I am you know gifted and or purchase I could find the space to store them all if I need, if I really wanted them, or really wanted to, should I say, because I do like all of them. I too, though, find I get overwhelmed if I have too many. I find that I get much more enjoyment if I'm not feeling as though I have too many to do. It's like I'm giving myself a massive to-do list. If I have too many in my stash and when I first started diamond painting I very much had one or two you know one or two diamond paintings and sometimes I was you know purchasing them while doing one so that I would have one that had arrived and was ready by the time I finished the one I was doing. I think that's how many people start out to be honest with a lot with a lot of hobbies is you know they're buying them as and when they need to and it slowly but surely builds but I do often go through and have like a rejig a revamp a check of the amount of diamond paintings that I have because I think I do I feel overwhelmed too much it's almost like I have a diamond painting to do list and I can not think of it as a to do list if I only have if I have a few in my stash but when it starts getting an unreasonable amount for me to do say within a year or two I then start to feel like it's a to do list and that gets too much and that's when I have to have an organise and a go through it all. And in turn, sometimes it is the storage. I don't want to go and find another place apart from my craft room to store diamond paintings. I don't want to establish where else in my house they could potentially be stored. Because if I do that, then... It will be harder for me to decide which ones to keep and which ones not to. And I will take the easy decision to keep it. And in turn, it will then grow too much and it will be too overwhelming. And I'll feel like I have a to-do list. And then I'll, you know, 
have to be in an organising mode to go, nah, this isn't working and be quite brutal with my stash. So I am trying to restrict which ones I keep and which ones I do. And in turn, it does mean that there is quite a lot of giveaways. I often do unboxing videos quite often in bulk so that I, you know, can select more so from, from everything that I've unboxed as to which ones I want to keep or not. And I, I'm, I'm being very brutal with most things I unbox and I'm going on the basis of it's going and very occasionally I'll allow myself to keep one. <clears throat> because I have so much stash that I need to work through and get through. Um, and of course I've just got two, recently got two custom diamond paintings um, of our logo that you know have added to my stash by two and they are something that's going to get done sooner but in turn then my the ones in my stash aren't getting done because I'm doing these ones and there's always going to be something that crops up that gets pushed in front of the ones in my stash for various reasons whether it just be something new and I love it whether it be something like the custom logos that's going to be a comparison that I always also think will be you know a very good visual aid for people to show people what um what the difference is between the diamond paintings are and I think it will be something that will be very very handy to have so yeah do not feel bad that your stash is low I think it can actually be a very good thing and it can stop you feeling the pressure of having so many to do and make sure that everyone that you do buy and you do do you love because otherwise it wouldn't have had a place in your stash if you didn't love it. Um, Cindy, she said, just a quick plug on a series of books she absolutely adores uh, and she's reading all over again for the third time, she says, but she started reading them 20 years ago. They're a series on the fictional character of a Washington DC coroner named Kay Scapetta. Oh, I think I may have read one or two of these, Cindy. I'm not sure if I've read the whole series. Maybe I need to listen to it on Audible. I can't remember what it was that stopped me reading the whole series. Um, she says they are by the author Patricia Cornwell. Yeah, I've definitely read one or two, but I know I didn't finish reading the series and I can't remember why, because it was years ago. Uh, she says they're in sequence, but such page turners. She says this coroner um, helps the police solve murders uh, and track serial killers. She says they aren't all blood and gore. Good. Um, she said, as you would think, but they are more jaw-dropping. Um, she says, oh my goodness, she says, I would never have guessed that type of books. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have to give them another go. I can't remember why it was that I didn't finish reading them. Maybe I just found another series and got distracted. Um, I can't, I don't think there was a particular reason I stopped reading. Uh, she's hooked, she says, and as far as I know, they're all still easy, easily found, she says, um, to purchase, but they are available on Audible. Uh, anyway, she says, just her two cents on good books. Well, I'll definitely put that on my list. I will have a look um, and see if I can find sort of the first one. Um, to listen to and see if there was a reason that I I'm sure I've read at least one of them but it was many many years ago you're probably talking 15 years ago that I read it so it may well have just been a 
time in my life with kids that stopped me reading it again. Or it may have been something that I didn't like, maybe the writing style, but I can't remember. Or maybe I just found JD Robb and that was it, I was gone. Um, but yeah, I'll put that on my list. Uh, Tammy, she says, do you ever get overwhelmed with having too many like work in progress started? She says she currently has four large, one small paintings, small paintings. She says three fibre arts projects. She says Anna paint by numbers. Uh, she likes variety and she does spend um, time on all of them during the week. She says at times she does think that she bites off more than she can handle, but at the same time she likes a challenge. Um, I think sometimes it's the viewpoint that you have on them. I don't think I would like to have five large, sorry, four large and one small painting on the go. Now I say that and people are probably thinking, well, you had Minions on the go and you had Mr Quackers on the go and you had your two Heaven and Earth designs on the go, which in effect was four. And yes, it was four. Um, but I also, while my Heaven and Earth designs are projects on the go, I don't nest I see them as sort of a long time always there type project. So I don't see the Heaven and Earth design as something that is likely to be finished quickly. I do see it as more of a a whip and chat YouTube project, I suppose, rather than, you know, a, a have it out on the dining table and, you know, it's a big project that I need to work on and get some of it finished. So I don't sort of count those in my head. But I did feel when I was doing Mr Quackers and Minions, as well as some smaller paintings, I even too felt that was too much for me. It was very much a which one am I doing, which one should I be doing type thing. I much prefer, I do like a challenge and my heaven and earth design is a challenge in itself. I don't like to set myself too many things to do at once to the point that I do feel like it's a mammoth to-do list and I'm overwhelmed with it by it all. My happy place in relation to diamond painting is one large and one small. And I will often do the 30 by 40 painting and then it's when that 30 by 40 is finished that I may do a bit of my large one and then I will pick up another 30 by 40. It's only sometimes if I'm doing a 30 by 40 that I want to finish but isn't enjoyable to do. So maybe the diamonds aren't as nice or it's a bit frustrating to do. Or maybe if I've decided that my small one's actually going to be a 40 by 50 and not a 30 by 40, which is not really small, is it? That's when I'll use my large one to sort of break things up. I try not to put a, a timeline on my large ones either. I think it just got to the point with Minions that I have been doing it for over a year. And while I did Mr Quackers in between, I think it did just get to the point of, hang on, a year is far too long for me to have a non heaven and earth design painting on the go. Because I have so many large diamond paintings in my stash that I want to do that I'm trying to narrow my focus to be more, more one big one, one small one. Though having said that, one of the very exciting new things that I unbox next week, I will be kitting up, um, but it's not huge. Uh, and it's, it's a different, it's a very different sort of painting or set of paintings. And I find it won't interfere with my 
large and small type paintings. Plus, I do think by the time I kit that up or actually start to do it, once it is kitted up, minions will be done. And it will be another week or so before I get to kit up another large painting. So I do envision that my order of doing paintings will very much be minions until it's finished because I'm so close to the end, as you can see. Minions until it's finished. Then I will move on to the logo, 30 by 40. And unless I get really bored of placing the white, which I might do, unless I get really bored of placing so much white, that'll teach me to have that logo, um, then I will continue that one until I've finished. I will then probably make sure that I break it up with working on whatever my next large painting is, depending on what the app decides. If the app does decide on another Splatterworks painting, I might change my mind because they've also got loads of white. Um, and then I'll do the round logo and then I'll go back to the app deciding what photo I do, what painting I do. Um, Janice says she likes to use craft putty in her pens. She finds that's what works for her. I've never really tried loads of other stuff. I did try some paddy wax, um, but I didn't find it, it lasted any longer really than the normal type of, maybe a little bit longer, but not enough to have noticed. Not like glue dots that, I don't think I've particularly changed a glue dot yet. Um, I may have had ones that I've taken the glue dot out and popped it back in the pen after using it for weeks on end but I've never fully taken out a glue dot put it in the bin and put another one in because I've just they just stay sticky for so so long I think I would get so frustrated if I went back to wax in fact my niece who was doing a painting while she was here with me um, she was doing a special, she was doing a little unicorn bag. I think I unboxed it on the other channel. She was doing a little unicorn bag. And it had the pearlized diamonds. So you know the ones that are haven't got any facets on, they're a dome and they do have like an AB coating on. And she was getting so frustrated with the wax not picking up the diamonds. Because it was picking up the coating. So I actually put a glue dot in her pen for her to use and I never heard another peep out of her. I just told her that if you find it starts getting too sticky and your diamond won't stick to your bag, then you just have to dab, dab, dab it on your clothes, which I saw her doing a couple of times. I saw her dabbing on her clothes, but apart from that, I never heard another peep out of her about wax. So... Glue dots have been my go-to, but craft putty, if it works, it works. I'm sure there's some videos out there on somebody trying loads of different types of, of wax and putty and all that sort of stuff. And to be fair, the glue dots do get a little bit messy occasionally. Occasionally you can find that they're sticking to diamonds and being a bit stringy and picking up more diamonds than they should at weird angles but overall they're so much better so much better um the cat lady she says diamond art studio use resin drills she says so that zesty that we did in the december advent that we all love so much which we do uh she says was resin drills she says, and it's because of that, that's why she's trying to keep them separate. Yeah, Sesti was an absolute dream to work on. I was so happy doing Zesty Wolf. Um, and yeah, the, it probably is that I will say I'll do a diamond paint and I'll be like, oh, those diamonds were nice. And it probably is those that are resin over acrylic. I just don't think all suppliers necessarily mention it. So I don't 
think I'd notice <coughs> and be able to tell for definite if it is or whether it's just you know a better quality of acrylic than maybe some other companies do <coughs> but if they tell us all the better uh, Edward said love the way that you switch out your whip and waffle uh, said has helped me get through the day being under quarantine exposed at work so 10 days off for me oh I hope you're getting paid because 10 days off paid is gold isn't it if you don't get paid not as much there's still a level of enjoyment for it but there's a dis disappointment to come later so I hope you got paid to diamond paint <coughs> excuse me I hope you got paid to diamond paint and my whip and waffle helped you all through it. Thing is, if I ended up getting exposed and had to isolate, I still work from home. So I don't think it would make any difference for me, unfortunately. But hey ho, can't win everything. Um, Cheryl said a few weeks ago, she ventured into using Pattern Keeper for doing a personal project. Uh, it has definitely been an interesting adventure for her. She says there's a few times she's had to frog some drills because she thought she was in one area. So frog is when you can clear um, what you said you've done when you've, if you realise that you've actually not done that area. Um, when she should have been in another. So she thought she was doing one area and she should have been somewhere else. I think that's why I work on that six section when I'm doing my heaven and earth designs. It what it fits nicely in the screen. I can often see to the left and to above. It shows me that I've completed that. So I know I'm in the right place. And I think that's why I like to do it in that size block. I wouldn't like to keep moving the screen while doing it. Um, she said your videos have helped a great deal knowing what little bit I know now she says based on experience she says I have a question she says do you have the option to change the completion colour of your squares um, she said she's heard me mention that I had difficulty completing lighter colours before darker ones um, and wondered if you have an option like to change that. I'm not sure for definite, because the thing is, when the colour fills in at the moment, it fills in with the, the DMC number colour that your battery went that time. I'm rolling through these batteries. Um, yeah, Cheryl, when, when you click on a colour for it to be completed, it completes with the DMC colour it's supposed to be. So when you zoom out, you actually see your picture completed as you should be able to see on your canvas or on your cross stitch if you're doing a cross stitch. Um, I'm not sure if they have the option for it to just block out as black when you're done or a dark colour instead. I think there was just there was just one where it was on my black and white one. I've not had this, I've not had this problem at all with the other pattern that I'm doing. Doesn't matter on there if I do lighter colours before darker colours. Doesn't seem to make a difference to me at all. I think it was because, <coughs> excuse me, because I did, because there was so much in like a white block and then I was trying to fit in other different shades of white with no reference as to the other very, very light shades and which one was like a light green, which one was a light grey, which one, because they all looked white on the screen. I think that's what I had a trouble with. I didn't have those reference points that I was used to. And that's what made me struggle. And that's what I think has made me do you know, a, a darker colour first 
or a couple of darker colours first just to give me that reference point within my grid because even though I do a block of six grids and I use the grids when I'm first you know placing the diamonds I then stop using the grids as a reference and I use the diamonds that are already placed as a reference instead and maybe that's just the way my brain works with it. Maybe if I stuck with the grid, I'd have no problem. Uh, but I haven't actually checked the settings to see if I could block the whole thing out. Because I use the other diamonds as a reference, I much prefer the colours still matching. I just find that if I have a, a big block with a lot of lighter colours, that I do need to do one or two of the darker colours at least first so that I have that reference when I need it. Maybe I didn't explain it hugely well on my whip and waffle. Uh, Joanne, she says, hi Rebecca. She says last week she received her first zesty tray. She says, and she thinks it's her new favourite. Uh, she's bought a few trays from various places, uh, she says, but yours are my go-to. Thank you for bringing them to us. Oh, thank you for your lovely comments. I do love it that everybody enjoys, or everybody seems to enjoy our tray, you know, our add more zest or zesty tray as much as we do. It reaffirms that I'm not loopy and I'm not the only one that likes it. Um, I went through a phase of preferring the zesty tray and thinking, oh, maybe this should have been the size we did, you know, as a standard size and just done the zesty. Um, and I enjoyed it more for a couple of weeks. And then I did a painting. I think I may have gone back to this Minions painting that's bigger. And I found I was reaching for the Add More Zest tray. And only really use a zesty tray now when I'm doing my heaven and earth designs. So it does change and you will, your zesty tray is new, it has a place. Um, and you may find that you'll flip between the two. Once, you, once the newness has worn off, you'll probably flip between the two of them depending on what painting you're doing. If I'm doing a much smaller painting, I like the zesty tray. Either a much smaller painting or a painting that either you're doing a smaller section of. So my Heaven and Earth designs I do in small sections. Um, or a painting with a lot of confetti. So you're actually, you know, running through 50 different colours or 30 different colours in your section because the colours are dotted all over the place. That's when I like using the zesty tray. But for the likes of this Minions, <coughs> I tend to use the big tray because I tip a load of diamonds into it and move myself up and down. Um, Denise, she says, just a random comment because she remembered while watching the Whip and Chat. Uh, she said, it seems that Ever Moment isn't done with the changes that they were making. So they're now working apparently on the idea of offering round paintings too. Ooh. I have had a look at the ever moment. I haven't quite hit the buy button yet. I think it's because I've got a few different paintings that I want to get done first that are sort of on my list to do. It's made me not hit the buy button. I've not found one that's made me go, oh, I have to have that one no matter what. Um, so I haven't hit the buy, buy button yet. Um, she says, but it might be fun for those that like round when the time comes, if ever moment are doing round. So maybe that's a reason I should wait. Maybe I should wait, finish my sort of comparison project. It's not, it's partly a comparison. And it's partly because I want to do them both. I want to do this, the Add More Zest logo in both round and square. But maybe I should wait until I've finished that project, which I'm not rushing over. I have done a round versus square comparison before, 
and if you go to my website admorezest.com under videos I do have a round versus square section where you can watch the video and I did do the same picture in round as I did in square um, so there is a video out there for people to be able to watch the logo I will of course be showing to everybody but I'm not on a time crunch I'm trying to release the pressure of any time crunch not make myself you know feel as though it's a rush I've got to do it because you know I need to showcase the results because I've not shown it before and it's new and while it will be different it's a different supplier it's a different picture it's in effect a custom uh, even though it's not a person it is a custom rather than a stock photo um, yeah I'm trying to make sure that I've got no pressure with it but maybe once that's done I'll have a look on ever moment and see if they're doing round yet and if they are maybe I'll have a look at an ever moment square and or round whether they be the same picture or whether they be different Sorry, I've got one black drill stuck in my tray. There we go. I was trying to put the black diamonds away and I just had one that would not come out and it was stuck in the spout. Okay. And breathe, Rebecca, breathe. Right. I'm coming all the way back over here now. So this is where my computer doesn't want to let me move over enough. This is where I need to be now. I'm coming right back over to this side. I've not got huge amounts on this side to do, but this is what's going to decide my colour now. So the first colour I hit that hasn't been filled in is this symbol. So I'm going to do that one. I'm going to keep them out on the side so I can keep reminding myself what symbol I'm doing now. I've moved off from black and get some gaps filled in while we've still got many comments to go through. Uh, Susan, she says, I like the idea of how you're going forward with your heaven and earth design canvases. She says, if you don't work on them between whip and waffles, she says, they will be go they you will have them ongoing for years. Yep. I kind of feel like they will be ongoing for years. Um, she says, I really like these videos. She says, thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, there are definitely times when I do think to myself, the heaven and earth designs are going to go on for years and they're never going to end. Uh, and I'm never going to get to my other heaven and earth design, i.e. my canvas where the design is printed onto it, which will be quicker, but it's still a heaven and earth designs. I do kind of feel like I'm never gonna get there and I'm never gonna get that done. At the moment, I'm pushing that out of my mind a little bit on the never gonna get to the end. I am concentrating on doing a whip and waffle once a month and doing an additional section off camera per month and at the minute I have done it for the month of January so after the whip and waffle last week I actually left it out on my desk and I did it straight away I did a second section same day so it could then go away until it gets pulled out again um, I could potentially squeeze in a little bit more time on it and I think later on in the year because I have quite a few projects at the moment that I want to do and it's always time uh, but there's quite a few diamond painting things that I want to do I want to do my logos in round and square I want to finish this painting I also want to be at the point where I'm kitting up another large painting and another one of my small ones from my stash 
I feel like I have, you know, quite a few, especially larger, quite a few larger paintings in my stash that I want to be doing. And I want to be getting completed and I want, you know, I want to see what they look like when they're finished. That I don't want to just do, either just do small or just do large. Um, and, you know, spend a load of time on my head and their designs and neglect all the others. So I think for now, for the beginning part of the year, I'm going to stick with doing the whip and chat once a month. I'm doing at least one more section per month, probably straight after the whip and chat or within a day or two of the whip and chat. And then I think once I've done the logo, once I've got another large one kitted up and sort of see how long it takes me to do a large one when I'm doing small ones in between, then I may start giving myself the challenge of maybe when I finish a large painting, I get my heaven and earth design out for a couple of weeks and work on that before I allow myself to kit up another large painting maybe and, and set myself little mini goals like that that will help the heaven and earth design along but it won't take over all my diamond painting time and not allow me to do other paintings, kit up other paintings, de-kit other paintings, all that sort of stuff that I love to do alongside. Um, yeah, so it, it, my focus at the moment is once a month and I am going to keep re-evaluating re it through the year and maybe try and have the odd month or the odd couple of weeks where it gets that extra push. Um, the extra drive that I might need to help it come along a lot quicker and become a potentially, you know, eventually get to the point of being a finished project rather than a constantly ongoing project. And the closer I get to the end of it, the easier that will be, for sure. Um, it will be much easier to drive myself to do more of it the closer to the end of it I get but on my little dreamer's tree I'm I'm a third of the way through it so it does definitely progress quicker than I may think it does and I think that's because it is 40 centimeters across it's the length that's long it's very similar to this one once I've actually stuck a load of time onto this one I've got through the other half of it, considering when I first started the whip and waffle, I hadn't quite got halfway. I have been able to get the other half of the way by dedicating a month to working on it. Um, so I could potentially do that with the heaven and earth designs by dedicating that bit of time um, to get through it. Right, I'm hoping I didn't miss anything there. What's next? Okay, the next one I hit is the letter K. So I'm gonna do that one. <coughs> Some of these colors are getting quite low, but I may have them in my spares. Oh, look at that lime green on that blue tray. Love it. Sorry, I just automatically popped a rhubarb sweet into my mouth that I had sat on the side. Completely didn't think about the fact that I need to keep talking on a whip and waffle. So, please feel free to talk amongst yourselves while I just finish this rhubarb sweet. Oh, sometimes I do forget that I'm actually filming to upload to YouTube 
because I just get so used to just waffling away. As though you guys are in the same room. And every now and then it's like, oh, reality check. You should not have popped that sweet into your mouth. Um, because you're supposed to be talking and it's rude to talk with your mouth full. Um, sweet is now finished. We can resume our little our little chit chat for a little bit longer. Um, Juliet, she said, wonderful whip and chat. Uh, love, love, love this one. She said, thanks so much. Hugs from Utah. Hello to Utah. I need to move my diamond painting again. My laptop's in the way. There's just one little, another little batch of K up here. Be so much easier when I'm not having to move it back in two. But I find it quicker, especially when I'm so close to finishing. So close to finishing minions. I feel like I'm so close yet I'm so far. Because I do sometimes forget how long it takes to actually diamond paint. And I think, oh yeah, I can get this done in an hour. Reality check, it will be more than an hour. Um... Yeah, I do like to uncover more because then I'm not spending the time tipping in and out of diamond painting trays. I can just use a colour until it's done. Okay, next one. This is one of the fun ones. This is the slash symbol that I actually have in two different colours. I have it in a very pale yellow and a very pale pink. Now this one is the pale yellow, but I thought I saw that is the pale pink and this is the pale pink. So what I find when I've got them both, because it is very hard to tell between the two, I like to go through and do the pale pink first. Because when I'm looking at the symbols when they're both there, it's easy to tell, easier, it's not easy at all, easier to tell which one's which. Now it is the yellow that is in place more, so this one is the yellow. But I like to, and all these are the yellow, I like to check them when I've got pink ones close by to cross check against. And I like to get the pink ones in place first because there's less of them. And then I can just go through afterwards doing the yellow, not second guessing myself every two, every two seconds. Is it a yellow? Is it a pink? And that has been the biggest pain in this painting altogether is that, is that symbol. And the fact that it, it's not two similar symbols it is exactly the same symbol, twice, on the same canvas. Okay, are we in shot for this one? No, we're not. We're definitely getting closer though. Let's keep having to check before I start on another section, whether you guys can still see or not. Where I'm going. Get these little yellow ones in, and at least that symbol will be done. Done, done, done. Completely over and done with. That'll be nice. Won't have to fight with that symbol anymore. Right, let's move this over because the rest are all down here. I do keep flipping my eyes back over and coming back just to confirm that I have got them all because occasionally there is one that gets sort of there is occasionally like a random symbol that's not near a cluster of others and I don't want to miss that because especially on this symbol there's nothing worse than thinking you are completely done and then realizing that that is not the case and that you have a load more to do but yeah I can't wait till I can't wait till this symbol is done uh, Mary 
she says she hopes to order a heaven and earth design in the next few months uh, she would love to have something more challenging to work on at times yes heaven and earth design is a great sort of different type of challenge to work on don't bother trying to do two at the same time like I did that was probably one of that was that I would say was a mistake um, I got excited by doing a black and white one to use up all the grey spare diamonds that I have. Um, I think it was wrong to take on two. Uh, the only reason I am continuing with two is for the variety because I think if I hadn't taken on that second one I would still only be working on my heaven and earth design once a month. So I think working on each of them once a month isn't isn't causing a detriment to the first one that I started doing. Um, it may have done over time. It may have stopped me from potentially doing more on that painting if I was only concentrating on one. Um, but yeah, I think I should have just stuck with doing one and potentially, you know, done a second one after I finished the first. So that is my recommendation. Only do one. It's not worth doing two. Right, what's the next one now? So if I'm going up in a line from the bottom, it's actually this letter P. <coughs> and I don't have many blues that actually need doing. I have a little section of blue here, of which I only have one letter P. I have a little section of blue here and then I have a little section here and that's all I have left of blues. A lot of it is actually browns and yellows and some green and a bob of, pop of the other colours but most of the blue has already been done. And occasionally when I'm working on a section this big I will go okay I'm actually going to do all the blues. And because they're so bitty, because it's like three different bits, there's nothing down here that's a blue. I might actually do that. Can I get all three of them in shot? I can. So I've got this section, this section, and this section that are blue. And sometimes, as I say, I do take the decision to sort of get that section out the way rather than risk missing some. So I'm gonna do that. So the next one I've got here is the number seven. Um, uh, Mary also says, she says, talking about tea has made this American girl so jealous. She says, she's always wanted to have a proper English tea can't really find somewhere that offers that in the rural west of Virginia. Uh, maybe one of these days. Maybe you need to make yourself one. So what you need to, I say, what you need to really get to do a proper British tea, or this is, this is my version of like a proper British afternoon tea, is get yourself some sort of tiered stand so like a cake stand that has something down the middle and will give you like three layers or two layers. So that's what you display your British afternoon tea on. Then you need some sandwiches. If you cut the crust off, that's quite posh, but you don't have to. Um, you don't have to cut the crust off. Sometimes they are, you know, they're done with the crust cut off and they are long little rectangles laid laid on a level. Sometimes they are cut into small triangles so where you've got a square you cut your bread that way and that way and give yourself small little triangles. They tend to have the crust on. So that is your savoury part of your afternoon tea. Then you need um, some little cakes 
Maybe you will have a couple of different types of small cakes. Maybe you'll have a couple of strawberries in there, making the plate look nice. But the one thing you do need is a scone. A scone, a scone, however you want to say it. Um, I, ideally with um, some clotted cream. If not with, potentially you could get away with some whipped cream. But if you can, jam and clotted cream. There you go. Bob them all on a plate. Sit in the garden if you can, if the weather's nice. And you've got yourself an afternoon tea. But the key, key ingredients, the key things you need, and then you can add these other bits which can vary um, between one place and the next, is you need to display it on the layered sort of like cake stand that's two or three layers. Um, you need some sandwiches and you need scone. Um, scone with cream or jam. They're probably what I would say are the key ingredients. There will be lots of different opinions on what is right or what is not. But I think as long as you've got those, you'll feel like you're having an afternoon tea. Um, if you drink tea as well, then bonus. I don't even drink tea, so I drink coffee with mine, which may be right for some people. Uh, they may say that a cup of tea is what you need to make it a proper British afternoon tea. But yeah, make your own. Make your own. And then you can always test it against and see how close you got if you ever get round to actually getting um, a British afternoon tea. Uh, Anna said, nice chat. Thanks. Thank you. Um... Okay, let me get the next colour. I keep looking. I've got one more rhubarb sweet sat on the side next to me. I keep looking at it and telling myself, nah, behave yourself. Right, so I've done that blue section now. All the blue sections are actually completely filled because there's only a few of them. Now I'm going to go for... It's a mixture now because I'll end up hitting into the browns with this symbol. I'll hit into the yellows. The yellow and orange side of the browns with this symbol and then actually this red only seems to be about here and there's the odd couple over this side so I'm going to go back to doing whatever symbol is over on the far side. I'm going for some ABs. Uh, Diamond Sparkle Chase, she says, where did you get your blank canvas? Um, she would really like to venture into heaven and earth designs. She says, just have to learn how to load the file um, and hoping that her tablet will download um, Pattern Keeper. So as long as it's Android, then Pattern Keeper should work. Um, she would like to try the one that I'm working on. On now she says love the picture she says can you do rounds on the canvas uh, sorry she says I have a lot of questions um, so the blank canvas I got from Aliexpress um, you can get a blank canvas that will take round diamonds and or and you can get one that will do square diamonds and they are different size canvases so you do need to bear that in mind when ordering while a heaven and earth design can be done with round diamonds, um, as you can see on this with a round diamond, there is a gap around it. And on the actual canvas itself, it has a colour, so you can hardly see the gap. Um, it like, you know, it flows into the painting and it all becomes part of part of it. On Heaven and Earth Designs, because you're doing it on a blank canvas, you would have white around the outside of every diamond. Whether that be a black diamond or whether it be a white diamond, you would have a white around the outside of it. Just those little corner pieces that show. Uh, it depends whether you are happy with that or not. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't stop you being able to see the image that you're doing. 
it won't stop you know the picture looking like the picture it just won't look as good as a square and that's the difference um pattern keeper as I say is only available on android devices where it's available on the google play store so if you have a newer Huawei tablet that doesn't have the Play Store, it won't allow you to download it. Um, Kindle app won't automatically allow you to download it. You have to do a few different steps to try and get the Play Store on a Kindle. Um, but if you have the Google Play Store already on your tablet, then you will be able to download it. It's a free trial for two weeks. Um, from the moment you download it's two weeks from then and then you'll need to pay for it after those two weeks but it's only a one-off payment um, once your two weeks are up and it was worth every penny as far as I'm concerned it was an absolute dream no questions asked no questions asked this is being purchased type of purchase for me. No quibble at all. Um, okay, I think I answered all the questions. Please shout up again if I didn't. <laughs> uh, Liz Harrison, she said uh, she has a large printed canvas. She said with terrible drills. Uh, she loved the main picture in the middle. A Scotty dog she said so she cut the edges off um, that were just grass and trees oh that's like a little mini save oh then she said she wishes she hadn't oops I thought that was going to be a mini save of a, of a terrible project then um, she says when she got to the edge to put the drills on uh, she missed the border on the canvas and it was harder to line the drills up and keep them on or oh, this sort of overhang like here she missed this bit of overhang when it got to the edge um, she said in hindsight she wished that she just drilled the bit she wanted and then cut it down afterwards yeah I get what you mean I think I've done that on one painting before I did cut the border off was it before or was it during me diamond painting it? I can't remember which. Um, but I'm pretty sure I cut one down or cut the edge off. Even if it was just to cut like the legend off to, to make stickers out of it. it. Might have been that that I did. So I didn't do it all the way around but I definitely did it on a section. And it was nowhere near as nice. And I don't know why. I don't know what made it so hugely different. It's, it's not like we don't, you know, diamond paint. <coughs> it's not like we need that edge, but it's like we do need that edge. Maybe it's just the way our mind works, Liz. But I get exactly what you mean. Uh, Arisa, she says right now she's collecting diamonds for a Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, she's almost ready to order the blank canvas. She said she wanted to wait until she had every colour, at least a few diamonds to be able to start and collect more while she starts the project. So she can check if the colours she has are difficult to get on diamond paintings due to being an uncommon colour. What do you think about how easy to find some colours and the difficulty to get others? So when I first started my big heaven and earth design, my idea was I was starting before I had all the colours and I was just going to fill them in when I got them. Yeah, absolute nightmare. <laughs> Um, I did start off quite gung-ho, you know, quite going for it on my Heaven and Earth design using my spares. And I did find that it waned a bit once I got quite a few sections down. All the gaps drove me batty. 
Now, I was kind enough to be sent quite a lot of drills by subscribers. Um, and I did manage to get the diamonds that were needed to fill those gaps. But even actually filling those gaps was hard work and working out exactly where I was up to on the canvas and where it needed to go. So I do recommend having the colours you need before you start, or at least some. I say some of them, and it's fine to sort of get going, especially if you're doing it as a project around other projects that you're doing, then yes. I would probably be at the point I would want pretty much every single diamond when I started. If I found I ran out of a diamond, I would probably only want to go a certain amount of a distance without one colour before I said, okay, I either need to go buy this colour or I need to wait until I've got this colour so that I could fill in the gaps and then carry on. I think I would limit myself to, you know, maybe only one complete row before I say, okay, I'm not going any further until I've got them. Um, for the purposes of, you know, only having one gap to fill, so only running out of, say, one colour, and being able to cross-check it when that colour came in. Um, but yeah, there are definitely some colours that are more popular than others, or more used than others. I think if you stick to maybe one type of diamond painting supplier, so maybe you have a favourite company and that's where you buy all your diamond paintings from, I think you may find that limits you more than buying diamond paintings from different suppliers because I think it's the software that they use. And if you're always buying from one company, they may not use all the 400 plus DMC colours. They may only choose from a range of 250 and that's how they make up the painting. Um, so you may find that actually buying from different suppliers who are using different software will in turn give you more of a variety of colours. So that would be my suggestion. Oh, so I've just realised when I'm putting down this AB and I've just finished and I'm getting ready to put it away. That is the last of the ABs on my painting because my other ABs were blue. OK, where am I up to next? The letter H. I've already done this once in this video but I hadn't peeled off all the colours by then. So you can tell we've got a distance. Oh, looking at the time, I can tell I've gone a distance. I've been waffling for ages and I'm still on comments from two weeks ago. I need to get a wriggle on. Um, okay, okay. I've just realised how late it's getting here, so I need to get a wriggle on. <laughs> um, so Cindy, hello Cindy, uh, she says just a quick giggle for you, she says every time I hear you say the phrase get a wriggle on, I don't know if I just said it then, did I say I need to get a wriggle on? Oh, I can't even remember now, uh, she says she has to giggle a little bit, she gets a mental picture Hang on, I'm trying to move at the same time to my next section. Got to keep diamond painting. Um, she gets this mental picture of a Mr. Quackers styled wiggle slash walk slash dance. And you and Megan doing this silly wiggle dance in the conservatory while you work. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say we haven't done that before. Things have definitely got a little bit silly before when we when we're working at stuff for definite um she says sorry although i'm sure that's not what the phrase means in any way no i think that the 
phrase wiggle on is just a bit more like, you know, got to get a move on. Got to get a wriggle on. Got to get moving. Got to get things done is that sort of phrase. But if you want to picture Mr Quackers or us doing a Mr Quackers type wiggle, go for it, Cindy, because there are times it does get a bit a bit wriggly um, and a bit funny, especially when we are doing, uh, when we are having what we call our sort of mass production days, maybe, or our producing days when we are getting things like log books ready or pouches or cover paper holders. We tend to do that sort of thing quite often in bulk. So we do have a day where we're preparing things so tomorrow is a preparation day for us so we will be getting a lot of things prepared making sure stock levels are up ready for launch um, next week i think there'll be a lot of pen boxes so our pens we um we hand cut or hand cut, hand cut slash cry cut, cut um, the boxes for those so that they go out looking pretty and there is a box to store them in if you, if you like to store your pens that way. Um, we do need to get quite a few of those ready. Not only because we're recently restocking, um, but also for the new ones. Uh, such as this, they do need a little, a little home to go in, a little bit of packaging to get them ready to go out into the big wide world and all their new homes. I'm not sure what else is on our list. I know there's loads on our list. Some of it will get done tomorrow, some of it will get done in the evenings through the week, depending on how things can be split. There are some things that are, you know, quite easy to do little bit by little bit, i.e. do a little bit each evening and there are some things that are a lot easier to do all in one, uh, especially the likes of log books. So Megan will print and I will punch and assemble. That's sort of something that we tend to do together at the same time. Otherwise it can just get messy and yeah, we don't want different sections of the log book here, there and everywhere in the conservatory. It's much better if they're assembled into a book as soon as possible. Uh, so there will be there will be quite a bit of that tomorrow. So while you're watching this, Cindy, we'll be doing it at the same time so you can picture us having a wriggle on. Um, oh, Talita, this is a long comment. Uh, she says she was listening to the Whip and Waffle and she realised that she got confused on some information. Well, that's fair enough. You speak a different language, I think, is your primary language, if I'm not mistaken. And the English language isn't the easiest. She says she thinks that the white elephant uh, that we did at Christmas is actually her amigo de Anka. And I've probably pronounced that completely wrong. Um, she says, which roughly translates to false friend and the rules can change during play. Uh, she says, that's the reason that she doesn't like it. Um, how can she play a game that keeps changing its rules? Yeah, I don't think White Elephant, the rules don't change. Just who can have the gift? who chooses to have the gift can change. So yes, you can have the gift taken from you, but there is only a certain amount of times that that can happen according to the rules. Um, it's a bit more of a stealing game than anything else. Um, whereas, yeah, I can imagine if the rules keep changing, then I can understand why you don't like it. I like to know where I'm at, though doesn't mean I like it when it gets stolen from me. Um, <coughs> so she prefers not to hurt her family's feelings and therefore she abstains. 
She says her family Christmas was normal. Well, she said her kind of normal, that is. She says our normal. I think everybody's normal is different. Uh, she said her dad made Christmas lunch. Uh, they ate, conversed and moved on to other things. She says she thinks they began a new series called The Expanse, went to bed at their normal hours. Uh, each family, family member has their own sort of sleeping hours, i.e. the time they prefer to go to bed. Um, her and her sister stayed up to listen to the fireworks and or barking and howling, barking or howling down the street. Um, and next morning they traded presents um, if they could and made their remarks on the new season, uh, series that they'd started watching. The New Year's celebration, she said, was pretty much the same. Dad cooked New Year's Eve New Year's lunch um, and they ate together and theorised about what might happen to the characters of The Expanse and what they thought about the series. It took some time for her dad to confess that he wasn't really liking it and since my sister had already begun, began, um, her mum and herself are continuing to watch the series together and she's looking forward to reading the books that this series is about. Well, it sounds like you had a wonderful Christmas. Whether that be your normal or not, it sounds amazing. Okay, I think I'm done with H. Let's pop away H. And I forgot. I didn't pop, I popped the pot on the side in my craft room rather than back in my case, and that's never a good idea. Because at least in the case, I can't tip it over. That's the difference. Okay, I'm going for, can we see it? No, this is, this is where having the computer on this side doesn't help. So I've got a couple up here, but then it does go into quite a few other places. So let's get another orange, uh, Kathy says she did get slightly overwhelmed with her six diamond painting Christmas gifts. Ooh, yes. That sounds like quite a challenge, especially if it's getting closer to Christmas and you've got to complete them all. Uh, she said, but it did work out. She did manage to finish her advent piece, uh, part four, Part of four, a four series of snowmen, she said, in January. So she did manage to finish that. Um, she said she usually has two paintings on the go during summer. Uh, one smaller travel piece and one larger one that stays at home. Yeah, that's my favourite combination, even though I don't tend to travel with mine. My favourite combination is one small and one large. And occasionally I will throw another one into the mix. And again, I'm not including my heaven and earth designs. I see that at the moment as one that I do on YouTube. I may reevaluate and try and do a bit more of it <coughs> come, you know, a bit later on in the year when I don't feel as though I have as many things you know projects that I want to complete even though I'm completing them one at a time they're still on my want to do list rather than a you know I will do this when the app decides type painting um yeah once I've got a few more of the ones that are on my to complete list then maybe I'll do a bit more um, but yeah, good combination. Uh, Delita, she also said, wow, she said, it took me a bit to watch the entire video. So this was my mammoth whip and chat on Minions, though this one's turning out the same. I don't quite know how long I've been doing this whip and chat now. I just sort of started and I've kept going. 
but I can't remember what time I started it, which is why I don't know quite how long it is. But I know it's another long one. Um, but yeah, sometimes needs must. You guys like the long videos, so why not waffle? Because otherwise I would just be sat on the couch doing this diamond painting. And I actually don't mind standing doing the diamond painting because I'm having a productive day today. So standing up doesn't seem to bother me as much when I'm being productive and I'm doing both. Um, she says she, she's been having a couple of adverse reaction effects due to the third dose. So she's been having a reaction to her booster. Uh, she says life is now returning to normal in brackets uh, she says she hasn't had the chance to carve out some diamond painting time uh, for her work in progress but she got to get to it today she said hoping everyone is fine safe safe happy and healthy uh, lots of blessings from She's put a flag. Is it Brazil? I want to say Brazil, but I'm hoping I've not got it wrong because I kind of feel like even though no country is a bad country, if you get the wrong one, it's bad. Um, <laughs> to you beautiful people. I am sorry. I'm not very good on flags at all. Um, I can only just about manage the Union Jack and all the separate flags that we have. Um the English flag and the Scottish flag, etc. Um, I'm already bad enough with all of them. Um, Mia, she said, how can the app decide, excuse me, the app decide what diamond painting you're doing and what app is that? So I use an app on iPhone called Tiny Decisions. If you have an Android phone or tablet I've heard that decide now works better but it's like a spinning wheel so it's an app where you can tap on it to spin the wheel and it will choose an option for you randomly but you can also type in your options so what I have done is I have an app for my smaller paintings and for my bigger paintings, because I tend to work on one of each. I don't want the app to tell me to kit up two large paintings. I'll be there forever. Um, so I type in what I have named each of my, the paintings in my stash. And I spin the wheel and it decides which painting I'm going to do next. And it just takes the decision out for me. Um, because I always feel that I've got that when I'm trying you know if it was a matter of me deciding which painting I'm doing next you've always got that way up between <clears throat> maybe a painting that you've recently got or one that you really really love like maybe like it more than your others though of course you like them all otherwise they wouldn't be there um compared to maybe a painting that has been in your stash for quite a while and therefore you feel like it's been left there long enough and you should be doing it. So letting the app decide is, you know, it, it's not your decision in one way. So if the app decides a to pick a painting that you say had in your stash for a while you're like oh yeah it's about time I did that um, but if the app does decide a painting that maybe you only got a couple of weeks ago you can be like oh yeah it'd be really nice to do that as soon as it's come in because I really like that painting so letting the app decide I suppose it takes the guilt away from what painting you sort of feel you should be doing um, because the app's decided there's no guilt there and that's why I like it because I don't feel guilty then because it wasn't me that chose it it was the app that chose it from a big long list that I gave them 
Right, I'm just currently struggling with this diamond now because I'm trying to fit it into a gap. All the other diamonds around it are done. I can't get it up. There we go. <coughs> but it's going in the middle of two blacks and one of them I've not quite placed in the middle. There we go. Couldn't get it to squeeze in. I've got a little bit of this red here. The dreaded 666 red. <coughs> um, for the app, just another note, just thought. Um, for the app, tiny decisions that I do use, I do have a video on it that shows you what it does. So if you go to the website admorezest.com, click on videos, I have a section on there called applications and that will give you a brief rundown. I'm no expert in apps, but I'm very happy to show what I use an app for and what I've figured out can be done with an app. Um, I looked at the right symbol then and I pulled the completely wrong bottle out of my pot. Um, so yeah, have a look there and it will give you a brief rundown of how the app works. But if you are using Android, people have said that that app doesn't work as well. Like it doesn't save what's already been chosen. So it could pick a painting that you've already done. Um, so yeah, if you use Decide Now on Android, it's the same sort of thing. So have a look at that video and see if it's something that you'll think worked for you. If you need the guilt taking out of what diamond painting you're doing next, then it may well be the perfect one for you. It definitely was for me. Okay, is that all of that one done? Oh, it is. So I'm just getting this red sec. You see, I'm getting further and further over while also doing some of the rest of the painting which is always good and again I didn't put my pot back in my case bad move <coughs> uh, Cecilia she says oh I'm also working with DMC 300 and 301 right now she says um, she's not good at remembering the numbers but there are a few in her memory yeah I think that I find that that and it's partly from cross stitch and it's partly from diamond painting more so recently from diamond painting because of course I do that a lot more but yeah you do find that some numbers will stick in your head while doing a particular painting um, and some numbers will stay in your head but some numbers will just bob in and out depending on what painting you're working on and you never quite know which ones will stick 310 often sticks 939 often sticks because that's the next sort of darkest one I mean 3371 is a dark brown 939 is a dark blue quite often you know one or the other or both of them will stick and then, yeah, you just slowly build up till you know a certain amount. Um, and you just get used to them. You just get used to the numbers and what they are. And you find your little favourites. Uh, Jacqueline Corbett, she says, have you got any green trays? Um, as she loves green. Are the... Add more zest trays. I thought you were... Think I was going to answer that as though it was... You know, the little green trays that you can get in kits. The, like, cheaper green trays. Um, add more zest trays-wise, or this tray-wise. We did do one green one. It was a darkish green in November. Um, we have also done sort of a mint green at one point. There will potentially be more green. It will come in the form of likes of a limited edition colour. We will be bringing more colours in through the limited edition. 
um, going through there's been quite a few that have been requested and we'll also be scattering in some that you know may not have been mentioned as much but vary it up a little bit because at the moment in our pile of sort of filaments ready to print we do currently have two different purples in there um, and of course I don't want to release two different purples on two different months so we will be we will be coming round to green again at some point I'm not sure how soon that will be we'll have to see how this um, new printer behaves when it arrives because I'm hoping we'll be able to bring out at least one colour in both sizes as a minimum that's what I'm hoping we'll have but then I'm hoping that most months we will also be able to bring an additional colour in one size or the other so in effect there'll be three different trays in two different colours to choose from that's the hope that's the long-term hope um, but occasionally we may end up with a printer out of action for some reason, needing some maintenance. Um, yeah, and it all it it always depends. Life always throws us a curveball, but we can always go for what we're hoping to achieve. But be a realistic and say that sometimes <coughs> life will have other ideas. And we'll change what we can or can't do each month. Uh, Betty says, love, love, love your videos. Thank you, Betty. Uh, she says, I'm deeply sorry um, for the death in your brother-in-law's family. She said, thank you. Uh, praying for your family, she said. Thank you so much, Betty. It has been, it has been tough for him, for definite. Um, at the moment, I think he's currently still in the UK. I haven't physically spoken to my sister yet since she she did actually go back to Australia with the kids because the kids are the kids are supposed to be in school, <laughs> um, but she is coming back um, again for the funeral. So um, he will definitely, you know, he's got his family around him and the support. But yeah, thank you to everybody. I know there's quite a few people that have um, passed on their condolences. So I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody that did, rather than read out every comment and make that, you know, the whole topic of the rest of this whip and chat. Because obviously I have got to the comments from last week. Woohoo! <laughs> For getting to the comments from last week, I feel like that's an achievement. I've been here long enough trying to get to the comments from last week. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to everybody who has passed on their condolences. I will ensure that my brother-in-law does know. Um, though, of course, I'm not passing on any more details than it was a family member because it's not my news to tell. Um Oh, Melissa said she was also wanting to know what that app is. So I hope you just heard me answering that, Melissa. That, that is the Tiny Decisions app. And you can see a video of it on my website, which is written down here um, and is also linked in the video. I have uh, a videos tab on my website that links to many of my sort of description videos the different comparisons that I've done tips and tricks most of the tips and tricks are up there I tend to update them in bulk so it may not have the most recent um, but it'll have most of them up there and I tend to try and update them as as often as I can again it's that whole time thing there is not enough hours in the day um, Tracy, um, she says, it's cute that you got a chance to work on the little um, diamond painting apron with your niece. 
yeah it was actually um i did get to work on a diamond painting with my niece but it was actually a little unicorn bag and um, the apron had stitch on it so that got pinched by my youngest daughter um who's 18 she did that herself that's her baking apron now uh she says take care and give yourself a little rest time this week if you get chance to yeah i think my body made me have a, have a, a bit more of a rest last week i think that's why my that's why the videos were a little bit more um spaced out last week um was that every now and then i do find that i do just get to the point where it goes hang on you need to not have energy this evening to do anything else uh sit down stay put and sometimes don't even diamond paint uh, but i do listen when i get like that and make sure that i do and i find it helps out in the long run so far i'm having a very productive weekend even if i do just have a long whip and chat out of it <laughs> um i don't know how much of the other videos for the rest of the week I'll get done. I have done a few of them, so I have definitely got a few done. Um, and hopefully I'll still get the rest done, depending on how much waffling I feel like doing when I finish this. We'll see how far I get. Okay, have I got all of that symbol? I think I have. Oh, no, I haven't, there's one there. Just found a little little rogue one my battery's flashing at me as well maybe my batteries will decide because my batteries don't charge as quick as i can use them so eventually i end up with no charge in a battery and i don't have one ready to go so i'm going to change the battery and line up my next colour and see if we can box this off in one more battery's worth. Okay, it might be zoomed in a little bit closer this time. So I have to make sure I'm still moving everything over. <coughs> but yeah, I think this is going to be my last battery. Still potentially will be over half an hour for sure before my battery runs out. So maybe I will hit the end of the comments first. Time will tell. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice to get a long whip and chat that I wasn't necessarily expecting. But we will see if I still manage to get the other long videos out that I was wanting to get out next week. Might still happen. We'll see how it goes. Um, Lady Dax, she sent her condolences. She said that, but she is glad, even though it was, of course, not the best time. She says she's glad that I got to spend time with my sister and to diamond paint with my niece. Yeah, sometimes, you know, even though it's not the best situation, I did get to spend quite a bit of time with my sister and with my niece and nephew. More so with my niece, because my nephew's very happy to entertain himself. Um, but it was still extremely nice to to spend those days with them, to, you know, spoil the kids a little bit. Not too much, you know. Sometimes you have to go with mummy's rules rather than Auntie Rebecca's rules. But we got a day where they got spoiled rotten and then it was back to mummy's rules. Um, not said as mummy's rules though, because that just makes mummy out to be the bad guy. But no, we went we went back to normal normal rules um, after a day, but they did get a day of spent staying up late, being spoiled rotten, getting to eat things that shouldn't be eaten every day. Um, and, you know, got to spend time with us as normal without all the treats as well. So, yeah, it was really good. <clears throat> um, Jess said, congratulations on almost fin finishing the millions. Yes, getting closer. Can you see? This was supposed to have been finished this week. 
It's definitely a lot closer now than it has been though. I'm hoping to get it finished. I think if I can get all the videos done that I want to get done this week, then I will be, will be able to carve out some sit down time um, tomorrow night. And then it will definitely be finished and boxed off. One of the videos I have done this for next week is the kitting up of the Admores S logo in square. I definitely made sure that I got that done, especially before starting this whip and chat, because I did think to myself, it's very easy for me to chat while doing the, the Minions painting. Don't know why, it's just a little bit easier for me to chit chat while doing it. So, and to, you know, not be tied into any particular block like it is with the Heaven and Earth design. So I did think when I started doing it, I might just keep going to get through comments. Um, so yeah, before, before I started this, I did make sure that the video, I made the video kitting up the Add More Zest logo painting. So that if I did do this whip and chat, which obviously I have, um, and I did get through a huge chunk of minions and potentially get it finished I have or close to finished I do have another diamond painting that I can do once it's done though I suppose I still would have had my heaven and earth design if push came to shove and I did need a diamond painting to do but I say I often think of that as being a YouTube painting and I'm not going to change my mindset on that until partway through the year, I think. And I might have a revisit. Once I feel like I've got through a few more of the paintings that are in my stash. I say I won't buy any more. But I may have bought something today. So. It is a different kind of painting. But yeah, I did end up buying something else today. So we'll see how well me moving on to the likes of my heaven and earth design will actually be. Okay, trying to check and make sure that I've not missed anything over this side of the painting before I think I'm just around here now for this colour anyway. Um, Jess says she knows what I mean about pushing myself at the end of a painting. She says she always does the last two rows twice as fast. Um, and she's been super productive with her diamond painting this month. She said, and it feels great. Yeah, I think I would have finished this painting quite a bit quicker. Um, if it wasn't for... My body just saying, nah, you need to stop really. When I'm actually doing it, like I am now, I'm doing it quite quick. I think because I've got used to the symbols, I've got used to the colours because I've been doing so much of it. Um, I definitely find that that process is quicker. <coughs> Excuse me. And it may even be that I finish this off tonight and just stay up a little bit later because as I say, I'm filming this on a Saturday. So it is a Saturday night, which means I can stay in bed a bit longer in the morning. So maybe I will just drive myself to get this done. Okay, I want Y. This is where I'm trying not to miss some symbols now as well. I don't need that many. I've just tipped out the Y for the next symbol. Look how many. That's going to be fun to get back in. I don't need that many at all. They just appeared. Um, okay, comment on a heaven and earth design. So Sherry says, what screen do you have in front of you? She says she's new at this. She's soaking in everything she can get. Um, she's just finished work and... 
her first 40 by 40 diamond painting. So the work on my heaven and earth design, the screen in front of me is my Huawei tablet, purchased purely for one app. Now do note Huawei tablets, if you buy a new one currently, I don't think they have the Play Store. Um, so you won't be able to get the app. But at the time I purchased mine, they had the Google Play Store. Um, so you might just need to use another brand of tablet. That's my only little caveat warning. Um, but the app I'm using is called Pattern Keeper. And I basically have a cross stitch on the app. Uh, a cross stitch chart displayed on the app. And I'm using a blank canvas. And basically, it, it's this chart, so all these symbols that are on this diamond painting, the equivalent of, are shown on the tablet. And then I pop my diamonds down onto a blank canvas. But if you're new to diamond painting and you do want to know all about my heaven and earth designs, then just bob to my website, uh, just in this bottom corner, admorezest.com click on videos and I do have a full section about my heaven and earth design as well. Um, I don't have all the whip and chats on there, it's more the explaining videos because they can be very hard to sort of find where they've gone on YouTube. So the website and all the sections on the website tend to be more all the learning type videos, I suppose that's what I've categorised them as. All the learning and teaching videos rather than, you know, my kitting up, my kitting down, my whip and chats. Where, you know, I will discuss tips and tricks and I will answer questions. And I might drop tips into the likes of my preparation videos. But I wouldn't know which tips and in which video. Um, so my website basically has all the ones where I've made specific videos giving tips, tricks, hints, ideas. I've done comparisons of diamond paintings, square versus round for the same image. I've done um, the same painting in, was it five different sizes? Um, showing a picture in multiple different sizes um, and it was a very busy picture as well so you can oh I don't think you actually got to see that section sorry um, it's because I've zoomed in a little bit more um, yeah it was a very very busy picture as well so the smallest one does not look right it gives you some hints and tips on that uh, I've got things about what to do with diamonds with no DMC number. All my spare storage videos are on there. There's videos detailing the apps that I use in diamond painting. Oh, there's one that I've missed. I did that colour. Um, yeah, so all those are in there. There's loads of different sections. There's also a beginner's. Hints and tips, so it's got a few different things if you are really, really at the beginning of your diamond painting journey. Um, there's some beginners videos in there as well. So yeah, go on, have a nosy, see what takes your interest. They're always there. So they're always ones that you can go and have a look at. Whether you be new to diamond painting or not, the tips and tricks videos have have given ideas to people that have been diamond painting for many years, as well as those that haven't been diamond painting for long. It's helped both. See, look, here we go. I definitely took too many diamonds into here. And a few of them have just jumped out, completely jumped out of the tray, but that's okay, because I don't need any more. I've definitely got extras. I've not even gone through half of the other colours that I've got on the bags. Right, let's get this hash one done before before I miss them. There's just two down here 
There is some somewhere else on the painting, but I don't want to miss those two. And I've got some up the top. Make sure I'm in shot. So I didn't do that last time. So yeah, head over to my website, Sherry, and soak to your heart's content. There is loads of videos over there for you. <coughs> Uh, Juliet, she says, just loved your whip and waffle. She said, can't wait to do a heaven and earth design one day. Uh, great month, she said, hugs from Utah. Uh, Fairy Dust, she has sent her condolences and she said, she's also almost done her diamond painting canvas. She will be happy when it is done. Uh, she has run out of some colours. Um, and she may run out of another. Oh, that's never good. I hope you've got some in some spares that you might have. If not, do bob over to whatever Got Diamonds Facebook group in your own country. There tends to be a few Got Diamonds and then follow it by your country. So for me, it's Got Diamonds UK. And quite often there are people there that are willing to send you diamonds you might be missing to help you out okay I'm scooting all the way over here now I've got loads of this over here <coughs> oh i'm right on the edge i'm just going right i mean i'm you know i have got a little bit of space on my light pad but i'm resting my finger on my canvas and it moves um, Anna, she says it's looking so pretty already. So this is my heaven and earth design, my big project. That's what the comment was on this one. This was last week's video. Um, she said she would love it if it was only cold where she lives. Uh, she lives in Massachusetts, UK. No, not UK, USA. Um, she says temperatures here, she says, have been in the teens and the 20s Fahrenheit. Oof, that's cold. I work in Celsius, but even I know that's cold. Um, she said they had a blizzard yesterday, which left about two feet of snow outside. See, I don't think I could cope with the likes of the whole snow thing. Spring is my season. UK spring. When it's, you know, between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. Nice fresh winds. Birds chirping. Flower, you know, you don't get too hot when you've got stuff to do and you've got to bustle about. But you don't have to wrap up like you know, with 50 different layers because it's so cold. That's my season. Uh, Crafty Tabby Cat, she says she uses tweezers to grab one or two diamonds out of her container or bag. Oh, see, I do a lot of just dipping into a container when I'm working on my heaven and earth designs because I often need only one or two diamonds just due to the fact that it's got 239 colours. So, you know, I'm only doing a little, a little grid that's 30 by 20. So um, I'm not exactly doing a huge number. I mean, I'm doing 600 squares. I'm placing 600 diamonds. But even so, you know, even when I'm placing 600 on here, you can see, depending on what section you're doing, you'll place more of one colour than another. But there are so many times that I just need one or two diamonds and I dip my pen in. I'll have to try Crafty, Crafty Tabby Cat. Thank you for that. I really like that idea. I'm going to give that a go on my next Heaven and Earth Design one, if I remember. I say if I remember because I know what I'm like. It might take me a couple of months to actually remember to get my tweezers out. Um, 
but yeah I might try using tweezers for the ones where I only need a couple even if I can't quite manage to place them on the canvas after getting a couple I might try and get a couple you know even if I then drop them into the tray and work from there I might try and do that I like that idea uh, Lisa's colouring corner she says I don't know how you whip and chat doing these heaven and earth design diamond paintings not as easily as when I'm doing minions that's for sure uh, she says she has a hard enough time trying to count and do hers without talking at the same time um, I think I mean I, I can't quite explain how my brain works when I'm doing it when I'm doing the heaven and earth designs but I know I definitely sort of think about where I'm placing stuff quite often in like tetra shapes compared to where another diamond is placed I very much think that way when I'm doing my heaven and earth designs but it's the way I also used to think when I was doing cross stitch but I don't think the same way when I'm doing the likes of this Minion Diamond painting. I, I don't process it the same way. It's very weird. Um, I can find chatting while doing it is a lot easier than reading while doing it. And I think that's why I don't get through as many comments, though having said that, in the first half hour of this whip and chat I think I've got through one comment haven't I um, if it's a topic that I'm you know just discussing freely and not reading first I do better um, the reading definitely slows me down um, she says she also has a total of four boxes for round rails these are her spares and four boxes for squares wow I don't think I have the space for that that's why I've limited myself to one bag of each for spares uh, she says she also has a box for a round ABs and a box for square ABs uh, and then a box for rhinestones and a box for special drills wow sis um, she says she's waiting on some more labels that she ordered so that she can finish setting up the final boxes um, and she can't wait because she has three or four more diamond paintings to de-kit. Yeah, I need to actually get my storage box finished up. So I did great guns with the video. I got I got my extra, extra box for squares all kitted up. I got all my rounds, sorry, not kitted up, um, all the foam board done, all cut and all in place. I need to put that video on the website, actually. I then got all the rounds moved into two boxes and all the squares are currently sat on my bookcase in an Amazon box that I transferred them to on that video. Um, I think, I don't even know if what stopped me, I think partly I've not decided on what colour stickers I want. I don't know whether I'm just going to go for black and white due to the fact that I can't decide if I want to go for a colour or stick with black and white. I don't, I've not thought about it loads but because the decision didn't come to me straight away or the answer didn't come to me straight away. It seems to have stalled me. But I also need to cut more foam board um, because I need to divide for the dividers for the 100s, 200s, 300s, etc. And I think I was going to do that off camera because I've already done a video cutting foam board. So I figured I don't need to do another video cutting foam board because it's the same size as the ones I've already cut on video and yeah I've just not got round to pulling out the craft mat and the foam board and cutting it 
and I think I might need to go and get some more from the shop so I think that's partly stopped me as well um so yeah I've not actually done even done the video or the box for my spares for my square spares but I have a home fun succulent plant that I kitted up for December and I have finished that painting and the painting has been sat here finished it is on the side in my craft room getting in my way all the time and I need to de-kit it but I can't de-kit it because I don't have my square diamonds in a box they are currently well they're all in an Amazon box they're in order but like it's, it's nowhere nowhere near as easy to put them away as it is when my spares box is done so I keep moving when I'm going to show the video when I'm going to film the video of me de-kitting that painting because my spares box isn't set up yet and that's another video that I actually was going to try and film and dis and put up next week so I need to get a wriggle on I need to at least get them cut even if I just cut as many as I can because I think it's going to take more than one video anyway um, the amount of time it does take to put the stickers on the cardstock and you know get the bags put back in at least the bags have all got stickers on already um, the time it takes to do all of that then you know I think it's going to be a say more than one video I've just spotted some more of this symbol over the other side of my painting as well uh, Christine says hi from Brisbane oh I've been there only really to the town centre and only for a few days or the city centre should I say um, but yeah I've been there been Brisbane um, she says she's new to my whip and waffle she finds it fascinating watching me do my heaven and earth design um, she says today she received two paintings from dreamer designs that she ordered on Christmas day oh I love a good treat to yourself on Christmas day uh, she says she would love to start one but she's being very stern with herself um, and by finishing off a row on her current painting she says it's an underwater scene and it's very confetti in intensive she says she's had at least a couple of breaks and completed some cute stitch paintings um, she says she'll have to watch the video you mentioned and maybe she'll try a heaven and earth design yes heaven and earth design is very confetti in intensive so maybe or at least my one is one of them's not too bad the other one definitely is so if you're thinking of doing one either pick a design with a lot less colors in than 239 is recommended um or make sure at least that you have finished your current confetti heavy design and have recovered from it before you do a heaven and earth design one okay how many comments oh i still feel like i've got loads no it's nearly there it's nearly there <coughs> okay let's let's go for that symbol and let's see how many of those i can get because if my battery starts dying i'm going to be scuppered um oh the cat lady hello mrs um she says i've made a start on my large dragon painting she says she's not loving the popping squares oh i'm with you on that one popping squares is probably one of the most frustrating things that you can have on a painting more than anything else i think popping squares yeah um she says she may need to do it on a table rather than on the easel 
Um, she's also fil finishing a crocheted baby blanket as she sat listening to me today, my waffle. Uh, she says once this is done and out of the way, she'll be able to spend a bit more time on her diamond paintings. Well, take your time with your dragon painting. If it's definitely popping um, and driving you up the wall and it's something that you still want to finish, maybe can't get a replacement for or something, then do make sure that you switch to something that is nicer to do every now and then because you don't want to lose your love for diamond painting due to a poorly designed diamond painting because that's just, that's just sad. Um, Coley um, said, I've been wondering when you were going to be doing another whip and chat. Yeah, so I do try and do them weekly. I did just miss one week in January due to family being over. Um, said sending prayers your way. Uh, said the loving the heaven and earth design uh, you're working on. They're hoping to start working on one of their own or he start hoping to work on one of his own in the near future. Said wonderful chat as always. Super exciting to see that you're almost done on your minions picture. Can't wait to see the finished products. Yes. I mean, as much as I can't wait for this Minions picture to be done, I must say, because it is a higher quality painting, so it's one of, it's from one of the higher quality manufacturers, a bit like um, Mr. Quackers, like as, as long as Mr. Quackers was because of his size, the fact that the quality was there still keeps the process as enjoyable. There's another one that I've just missed. There's one there and there's one there. Let's see if my pen can pick it up while it's just one. So that one got missed. You can tell I'm, I'm getting to figure out where all the symbols are. They're currently in my case, still in DMC order. So the symbols aren't always together, but I'm still remembering where they all are because it's really annoying when I miss one. I would rather just go back and fill it in, uh, just get it out of the pot now and fill it in and then I can forget the fact that I made the mistake. Um, uh, Coley said, can't wait to see the finished product. Well, you've got a very close to the finished product today in this monster waffle in various degrees of closeness, various angles. Um, but yeah, once it is done, which I'm getting so close, I think by the time I've finished this video, I think I will still have time to sit on the couch and finish it. And I think my legs will be too tired to do another video but I may still have the energy to do another video, so we'll see. But it'll be finished this weekend. That's my aim, if not Monday. Because you know, life happens. And if I give myself a deadline, something will happen. Um, but yeah, it's very, very close to being finished. It won't be a reveal and potential de-kit next week because those videos are already lined up and half videoed already. Um, but I will be doing a video on it probably the following week. I'm not quite sure what my schedule is yet. I do try and schedule in at least ideas for videos to keep it varied um, and shuffle about when required. I.e. I keep moving the home fun one de-kitting because I haven't got my spares box. And when I first scheduled it in, I forgot about that. Otherwise, I probably would have de-kitted it first before I broke them up. But hey, 
Um, Colleen says, how long have you been diamond painting um, and do you do square ones at all? Yes, I often do square ones. Um, my Heaven and Earth Design Whip and Chats are square. In fact, the next one that I've kitted up, my logo, that one is also a square. Um, I do have it in both square and round, but I have decided to kit up the square one because of the fact that I've been doing this Minions painting that is round for so long. Um, it's nice to, I like to change between them. I kind of favour squares, but I do like how quick rounds can be done. My best, my, I do, I mean, I say I favour squares. I wouldn't want to just do squares. I like doing both. Um, and I've been diamond painting now for four years. So 2018 I started. Mm. I'm trying to think if it was 2018. I'd say about four years. I've been diamond painting. I will have to sort of note down the date I started. Right, I'm going to zoom you out for a bit just because I want to work on these two sections of pink because that's sort of my next colour here. And I don't want to keep sliding you back and forward. I get dizzy and you get dizzy. Okay, I've got a few of these. Let's just tip a few out. Uh, Susan, she says she really does love... Oh, look, I've got one. Still stuck to it. Ah, it didn't quite get on the... Oh, nearly flicked that off my pen and threw it away. I'd have been well annoyed when I, when I had to go fishing for one later. Uh, sorry, Susan, she says I really do love watching you doing... You you doing this painting so this is the heaven and earth design she says she still doesn't have a desire to do one um but she loves watching it she says thank you so much for sharing well i'm glad you get to enjoy it even if it's through me susan the heaven and earth design is not for everybody um and that's not a matter of not everybody can do it because i do believe um that if you set your mind to it, anybody can do it. Um, it may take longer, may take a little bit more to grasp, but I think anybody can do it. So it's not a matter of nobody can do it. I think it does take more, as I was saying before, it takes more mental power to do the heaven and earth designs. And as I say, it's not a matter that some people can't do it. I think everybody can. I think there is a matter of not everybody wants to do it because of that reason. A lot of, a lot of the time, sometimes I question it, why I do it. Because this type of diamond painting is a lot more relaxing for me. I don't have to think as much and I think that's why I also keep it to YouTube um, a lot of it to YouTube is while I am challenging myself to do an extra section in my own time I say my own time you know off camera sat on the couch all that sort of stuff while I'm challenging myself to do at another section not on camera I'm not doing I'm doing that to complete the challenge not because I necessarily want to it's not that I don't want to because I don't have to there's no rule it is to me at the end of the day when I sit down and diamond paint that is my switch off time Right, that unless my body tells me, no, you're not even doing that, sit and browse your phone and like it, that is my switch off time, chill time, listen to a book time. That's my way of switching off. 
I can't do that when doing a heaven and earth design and I think that's why I prefer to do that on camera so that's the more I'm more active I'm more going I'm more you know I'm not switched off when I'm when I'm doing the the videos as such whereas I do switch off when I'm diamond painting at night and the heaven and earth design is too much for that so yeah I'm not saying that people can't do it I'm saying that I completely get Susan why you don't want to do it because for di diamond painting for you may well be your switch off time your you know chill just do your little little dotting um, and enjoy the relaxing side of diamond painting and I don't think you get that with the heaven and earth design you really don't it's it's more of a challenge and it's fun and it has its own place but it's definitely not for everybody for that any everybody for that reason uh, Arisa says can't wait to see the minions finished neither can I uh, I have had paintings where I have not enjoyed placing diamonds but I have continued to do it because I want to see the painting finished however with this one I am still enjoying placing the diamonds but I also can't wait to see it finished and that is because this one has was started in January 2021 and that might not seem that long ago but it was over a year ago so this painting is is definitely due to be done definitely um, Colleen has asked why don't I use a multi-placer on the diamond on the minions painting and um, that's because I don't get on with them Colleen I really just don't get on with them I haven't given them maybe you know the full time that I should have done maybe I definitely haven't I've, I've only ever sort of decided, oh, I'll try a multi-placer, picked one up, you know, given it a go for a few and got and switched straight back to my single placer. I've not given them a fair chance to learn how to do them in the point of being as comfortable and as quick as I am with a single placer. However... I also don't particularly have the interest to do that either. I like the fact that I've placed one diamond at a time on the painting. I like the fact that I have the control a little bit more over where each single diamond goes. I'm not too happy with the placement on a multi-placer. I think it, it can vary. It really can vary depending on the quality of the diamonds that you're using as to whether they multi-place nicely or not. But yeah, I just, I kind of feel like I'm cheating if I multi-place and I really quite enjoy placing them one at a time. I like the process. I like to know that I've placed all of those diamonds on that. And it's the relaxation in, in my dotting. I like to relax when I dot. And I think if I was placing the diamonds as a multi-placer, I would then have to, in effect, turn my pen round to multi-place, turn it back, you know, all that sort of move in between what can use a multi-placer, what can't use a multi-placer, you know, because in this little section here, I could get a three-placer there, but I couldn't in the rest. And I don't want all that. I like to just dot and dab. 
dab and dot, dab, dot, dab, dot. I just like that process and I don't get that from a multi-placer, which is why I think I just prefer to do them singly. It's just, it suits me. Suits you, sir. Suits me, sir. I can't remember what that's from. Some film or TV show, I think. And I'm definitely starting to ramble now. But I think that was the last question or comment. Oh, oh, nearly. There is one from a few hours ago. <laughs> I nearly got to the last comment on whip and waffles. So I only tend to read out comments on whip and waffles. And I try to read out most, if not all. I think there were some that did offer condolences that I just... From last week's so that I did just give a heart to um, because you know I appreciate each and every one hence the heart um, but I don't need to reiterate the message each time <coughs> I filled in some of those over there and didn't realize there was some there I've also got three little green ones up here uh, so in two minds said so glad I finally got to watch this whip and waffle so that is the one from last week from last Sunday um she said sorry it took her so long don't worry sometimes I bulk catch up on videos that I watch on YouTube and um, there is a a couple that I follow sort of like a vlog style that I like to watch while I'm doing you know, maybe housework or something around the house, a bit of company. Um, and I I bulk watched most of their videos the other day. I must have watched about three weeks worth. Um, she said she knows how it feels to have family live so far away. She said her sister lives in the UK and the rest of her family live in South Africa, where she's originally from. She said, uh, this video distracted her from the terrible diamond paint that she's working on. Ooh. She says, it's low quality with dark symbols that all look the same. Uh, she said, she's just about ready to stab herself in the eye with a drill pen. Eef, don't do that um, out of frustration. She says, do, you, do I push through? Or abandon the piece. Okay, I'm glad you asked this question um, when this whip and chat is due up the day after you've asked it. Is this a diamond? Okay, I think you need to ask yourself: Is this something that once it's done, you will display? You know, or you're wanting to gift it, and you've got somebody in mind, or do you just feel that you have to finish it because you spent money on it? If that's the case, and the fact that you've already said you just want to stab a drill pen in your eye, unless there is a very specific reason that you have to finish this diamond painting and you can't, in effect, get another one from a different company of the same image, whether that be cost reasons or not, or whether it just only be available from that company, um, then I'd say ditch it. Because diamond painting is as much enjoying the process as it is the finished piece. So this Minions, I am thoroughly enjoying. I have no idea where this is going to go when it's finished. In fact, my last diamond art club that I did, I actually gifted it away. As an image on, on my local Facebook site because I had nowhere to put it. I gifted it to somebody who was extremely impressed and very grateful for it. Um, and this Minions, I have no idea where this is going. It may well just go back in the box when it's finished, but I've enjoyed the process of doing it and the sense of accomplishment when it's done. And it sounds to me as though you're not getting that from the painting that you're doing. And... Are you doing this hobby for the pain or for the enjoyment? 
it's for the enjoyment, get gone. Get it gone. Because it sounds like you do not need that at all. <clears throat> okay, and now I have officially reached the end of the comments. So I'm not going to get every single colour on here. I'm not going to get Minions finished on a whip and chat. I don't think I'm going to be able to stand for that much longer either. I physically could. I mentally can't. So I'm going to call that a whip and chat done. I have very nearly finished my Minions. We started over here. I have very nearly finished this. I don't have much to go. Um, I hope it can be finished this weekend, but we'll see. Stay tuned. I will come back in the next, next few weeks with a finished Minions painting. Um, successfully achieved. And yeah, I'm kind of getting excited as to what my next large painting may be. As much as I'm enjoying the fact that I'm very, very nearly finished on this Minions painting. But yeah, look, look at that. It is, it is huge. It is 186 centimetres long or 73 inches if you're that way inclined. Um, so yeah, it's long. It's long, long. So stay tuned and I will let you see what the whole thing look like. looks like. Thank you so much for joining me through all these long whip and waffles and all the whip and waffles of this Minions painting over the last year or so. There's been a lot. Um, we got his hand on though. So he can wave bye bye to you all. Um, thank you for joining us and I'll speak to you all again soon.